Recording hey, in progress. Recording me. Yeah. So, so uh, do, I, do I leave the meeting? <laughs> do I leave the meeting or do I? <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that would be a, a really interesting episode, me just talking to a blank screen. Well, speaking of, I can already help you out immensely, Wim, because your last or one of your last ones was, uh, what does it get? What does it have to get punched in the face? Uh, yeah. Was yeah. That it? Uh, something like that. Was I think so. Yeah. 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 Something along those lines. It fucking sucks. It fucking <laughs> sucks. Okay. And then this one is like, how to not get your ass kicked in a bar. Don't go to bars, people. All right. Wim, shut it down. Let's That's go. it. Okay, so we can now start drinking. <laughs> so for the folks watching uh, on YouTube, so I am having Glenn going 10-year-old and, and Monty is having his own whiskey action. I make my own whiskey, yes. Yeah. So uh, if, if drinking offends you, this is... Yeah, this is a wrong podcast profanity. episode. If drinking yeah. and profanity offends you, this is not the... This is, no, salute, hermano. Salute, amigo. And uh, for all you people out there in the world... I just want to kind of make a, a disclaimer. Yeah, this is a conversation. Um, I have no special knowledge. I have nothing passed down from generations of masters or whatever. I mean, we're going to be talking about stuff that 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 I've uh, learned, that he's learned, whatever. And I just want to kind of like speak and and I, I don't really know how to articulate it, but. I just want to throw out what I've learned and I want to bounce it off of you and let's just kind of like think out loud. Well, and you know, the, a, good way, a good way to approach this is that we're just talking like we would be sitting together, having a drink and talking, you know, shooting the shit and people are listening in. That's the only difference. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, and, and again, everybody, you, you have been warned. So uh, yeah, you will be yeah. drinking. We are drinking. We have been drinking before. We have been drinking. We've been talking so for we're already- almost an hour now. Before yes. recording, <laughs> yes, we. I'm, I'm. I'm. I've got a nice little, little mellow buzz going right now. I'm getting there. I still have some coffee because it's just after dinner for me. Uh, but uh, that's a nice mix. Um, we already had my my morning coffee. So also, yeah. I'm also getting over that first winter crud. Oh yeah, yeah. Now, and so whatever voice breaks or whatever, I apologize for that in advance. Um, we just need to this drink one is more. Kind of like hung around for about a month. Yeah, you know, it does, I, does I feel good, crap. and then I'm then I'm off, and I, I'm I'm in the gym, dude. I'm telling you, oh god, it's been wrecking me. Like I'll <laughs> I'll go for like a week or two, and then I'm out for like a week or two. I'm just like, it sucks. Ugh, it's brutal. Yeah, you know, I, I, it's I, not I, recommended. Stop right now. Stop aging. Just stop getting older <laughs> until you get a better <laughs> set of conditions. Just everybody out there, just stop, please. Yeah, totally in agreement. For the listeners and, and the people watching on YouTube, um, I mean, Monty and I, we've known each other for almost 20 years now, I think. Hey, Ralph, so it, it, we're getting old. We're, we're the old folks now. We're the That's old fuckers amazing, that people, that the young folks, folks look at it like, see those two old folks over there? <laughs> we're the old, oh my God. <laughs> um, but I mean, just to give some background, um, uh, long career in law enforcement. Um, I'll give the whole, you want me to give the whole? No, I'll, I'll, from what I have, I mean, we'll just quickly go over it. Um, for the people who want the whole thing, I will link in the show notes about the, uh, for the previous episode, which we talked about it, but parole officer, border patrol agent, air marshal, uh, close protection work, you do now as well, uh, working the door as a bouncer. I mean, let's just call you a violence professional. Uh, and okay. I think that's going to be, I think that's a good. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, people need to know why they should listen to you. I mean, well, <laughs> who is this guy, right? Well, why, why should I listen to him? And this guy said, you know, I did 27 years total uh, law enforcement, a uh, federal agent. I did the last 16, 17 in counterterrorism. And when I retired in 2018, I thought I was going to try to go, I really wanted to kind of go into like, like a, a physical fitness for first responders. That was kind of like where I wanted to go. And I'm still kind of like that. A lot of things happened in the world <laughs> since then to kind of derail a lot of that. Um, so really I started working bars as something to do. Yeah. After about three months at home uh, with the, the first month was glorious. I, I didn't have to do anything. I mean, my daughter's going to work out, whatever. About the third month, I was like, I need to find something to do or I'm going to become a serial killer. So uh, <laughs> I need to get out of the house. And uh, I was in a happy hour. And they were talking about uh, the door guy had got uh, had got jammed up for a, a, a 
I don't know what you call it, a DUI, a DWI, a drinking. Yeah. He was drinking and yeah, driving. Yeah, yeah. And they did heavy medic cover, and I'm kind of eavesdropping, and I'm like, I worked the door all the way through a, a college. I moonlighted as a door guy before I could, what, what do y'all pay? You know, what, what what's the job? What are the hours? How many you want? They told me, I'm like, I can do that. They're like, yeah. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, when? Well, not right now. I'm drunk, you know, but whenever, <laughs> <laughs> whenever I sober up, you know, I can come in or whatever. And I started working the door and I was working dive bars. Yeah. I'm a dive bar guy. That's where I, that's my people. I'm not an upscale guy. I'm definitely, a, I was working a couple dive bars, uh, biker bars. I ride, yeah. you know, so I'm in that kind of community. So um, I worked for two and a half years at these two different bars. And I had two fights at each one in two and a half years. Nice. Then COVID. <laughs> COVID happened and people lost their fucking minds. Yeah. I So all the bars here, and I know it's different throughout the world, but here, um, all bars were shut down. Yeah. Uh, the only thing that was allowed to be open were restaurants and other things. Well, some of these were restaurant bars. The majority, as long as the majority of their sales were restaurant, they could stay open. So 51%. So a very nice restaurant bar. The strip that I work at has several, like it's a street and there's like a bunch of bars up and down it. Yeah. We all know each other. We all like go to each other's places, whatever. So the day my bar got shut down, the very next day they called me. Hmm. Said, hey, Monty, can you come help us? We are overwhelmed. We know uh, your bar guy just got shut down. Can you come help us? Sure. And that became like my, like, it was like a trauma fire. So I worked there for a year and two months. I had 14 fights. Uh, two of them had knives and one gun. And a much, like, nicer place. I mean, beautiful place, great food, whatever. But what happened was there was nowhere else to go. Yeah. This place was the place that you would go previous to COVID to get your, to eat, maybe to watch the game and then go out and do your, your big nighttime drinking. Now, since there's nowhere else to go, that was, and, and, in, and, and in where I'm from, about a city of about five, about 600,000 people, greater Metroplex and DFW Dallas Fort Worth is probably like close to it. I don't know, six or 10 million. I don't know how many, but in Fort Worth, six, about 600,000. There was only three places that I know that were open until 2 a.m. Wow. We were, we were one of them. So on a Friday or Saturday night, uh, our capacity was blocked at 250 people. We would be at 250 people at about 11, 1130 at night. And then the line would start. Nice. Nice. Well, around the corner. And I'm looking at these people and I'm like, why are y'all waiting in line to get into here? This is like, a, uh, you're waiting in line again to an upscale Applebee's. Like, what are you doing? Like, yeah. What? But there was nowhere else to go in, yeah. during COVID. And it became a late night destination. And all of these people from all their little shitty bars started coming there because there was nowhere else to go. And when I'll, 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 ne I'll never forget this. This is be one of those things I'll be convalescing. We'll be convalescing in a home somewhere with no teeth. <laughs> we won't even know our own names. I will remember this. There was a table. It was four tables. And I'm looking at them on the patio because that's where we set up. I'm on the patio. Table number one was like some 30-something, year, you know, women in their 30s, like some happy hour that went long. Normal working people. Next to them were was the table of, of banditos. You know what banditos are? Yeah, like, yeah. It's like a club, it's like a gang, gang or whatever they call them, clubs. Sitting next to them was another table of like 20 something frat boys <laughs> next to them was a table of like a bunch of like mexican vatos one of them had just got out of prison because he showed me his prison id in order to show me that he was old enough to get in and i'm looking <laughs> i'm looking at my door guy at the time mike is my door guy and i'm like mike no wonder we're fucking fighting all the time and none of these people know how to talk to each other <laughs> they all speak different languages. They all come from different places in the world, man. Like, how is this even like, this is like some, like, like a Petri dish of, of <laughs> just like, 
Let's just throw all this crap together, add alcohol, and see what happens. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just, just please tell me that at that point in time, you turned to your colleague and you said, it's looking mighty bleak for our hero. <laughs> Dude, let me tell you, nothing good can come of this. Let me tell you, nothing good can come of that. When I was thinking that, I was like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> How are we even alive, dude? I mean, it's it's amazing. And we were fighting a lot, a yeah. lot. And, and it, like I guess I spent three decades, as uh, almost three decades as a federal agent. You know, I had worked the, the door before, and I'd worked the door even before this, but this was like the pressure test. This is where yeah. all of that stuff got pressured. And I, I would joke, I would, I would reach out to my old guys at Homeland Security on the phone, like, hey, don't send people to, to what we call it DM, which is a defensive measures, you know, d- defensive measures training. So don't, 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 don't send them to, to DM training. Send them to me. Send them <laughs> me for a month. They'll come back to you with more experience and more fucking training than you'll. I, I, I dude, it was, uh, I don't even know how to uh, describe just like every night I was going to work. Every night I went to work always, even when I was a, uh, as, as a homeless security or a border patrol or whatever, you always had in your brain tonight might be the night that I'm yeah. going to have to get it on. But this was like, you just knew it was just a matter of time and it was going to come quickly. Yeah. Um, that you're going to have to take all of your training and, and you're going to, you're going to put it into the pressure test. You're going to use it. So what I discovered whenever I was going through this was like, I discarded a bunch of stuff and I've always, you know, as long as I've known you, I have always been of the, of the mindset that I don't care where it comes from. I don't care. I'm not a belt chaser. Never have been. I don't care who invented it. If it's useful and it works within the, my, my kind of training paradigm, I'm going to incorporate it. If it even if it's useful but doesn't really work with my how I do things, I'm not going to incorporate it. So I'm yeah. I'm always like stripping things off or adding things and just kind of like playing with the deal and kind of coming up coming up with something that works for me yeah. what I do. And what would be something that you discarded? That you're like, okay, well, you know, God. I used to think this or I used to use this, and like in this environment, it's not working. The the, the, the one of the main things that I discarded was any idea of like a plan of how a fight will go Mm. how i how i kind of decided things worked within my life or, or how the experience taught me things went if i initiated the action i could count on maybe two or maybe three moves that i could use yeah right so if I was like, if I'm starting, if I'm like, oh, this is going to go bad and I initiate, then I could, could tell you maybe two or three things that I could actively and actually do to the other person. And then there, who knows? Because yeah. we're going to have to see how those things work, how they respond. Sometimes you hit a guy and that's it. That's the end of it. Sometimes you hit a guy and he just looks at you like, all right, yeah. <laughs> it's on. <laughs> this is not where I wanted this to go. <laughs> And it's the opposite. If I'm the the in, he initiates. If we're in the middle of a conversation, and I'm trying to talk the guy down, and he just goes. I have no plan. So the idea of a plan, I, I don't really, I don't really believe in that anymore. I, I don't think I. You, you can't think of what you're going to do unless you initiate. And even then, it's a very, very, very small window. Like it's a very small window of of what you can do uh, with any kind of, of, of guarantee of, 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 that, of it actually, I mean, when, I, when I say succeed, not that you succeed in doing what you think it's going to do, but actually landing the blows or landing, you know, if you're grabbing or punching or whatever, I can probably, if you initiate, I can probably give you two or three where your punch is going to work. Yeah. It's going to land what effect it's going to have on the guy. Who knows? Yeah. That's up to the guy. And what I teach, you. what I teach nowadays is is like three main scenarios that 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 in my experience tend to come up. First one is an ambush. You get sucker punched. You get hit from behind, 
and and then it's just that's the know, worst it's the worst it's conditioning and you immediately need to go into survival because you don't know what what just happened i mean the guy that's have... that's the main thing people don't understand and, and i want to stop you that when you get hit and you don't know it's coming you might not even know you know you were hit yeah because you kind of felt but you may not you may not even feel the pain yeah. you just like feel like a pressure where you just got hit and you get and then you, you feel your body moving and it's going to take you what, what's it called the ooda loop you know observe orient decide act you have to observe what happened to you and you're just like for a second you're like yeah. what what just happened and then you have to orient to who it was who did what and then you have to decide what you're going to do and then you have to act but that first orient part can take a second because yeah. you don't really know what happened you know and, and 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 this is the difficult part because you know by default in such a situation you weren't prepared you you might just be talking to one customer in front of you like no you can't get in blah 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 and you get get you know get this big haymaker that clobbers you over the head from behind um it's 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 for me it's just operant conditioning it's a lot of training trying yes. to assimilate that and then instill i think the the, the basic doctrine uh, of an ambush is uh, is immediately aggressively going after the counter counter attacking counter attacking if you have yes uh, because you know like like you you know there's monty's law which i will link to in the show notes which is <laughs> it's never the other guy's turn never never and if you, if you, you are in an ambush and he has the the first turn it's it's it might never be your turn again. You don't that, get it. That's my approach. If if I can initiate, I want the other guy never to get an opportunity to, to do anything yeah. back. I want to swarm him. I never want him to be able to get off. Yeah. It's harder to do, obviously, if they initiated. And and that's kind of what I want to to, to when we, when I were talking on 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 email was one of the things that, that I learned. It's much easier if you initiate, obviously. Yeah. yeah. Right? If you start the fight, they, your world is, is significantly less complicated. The problem is, is if you consider yourself or we want to consider ourselves the good guys and you're operating within actual like self-defense law or what have you, you just can't walk around beating the shit out of people because they anger you. Otherwise, I would never do anything other than fight because people don't know how to drive. But... When you are in a bar, let, let me back up one, one thing. One difference I want to, 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 to make is men, generally speaking, it's not all universal, but generally speaking, worry more about social violence than asocial violence. And I'll define those real quick. So this is actually not my concept. This is from Rory, our friend, our mutual friend, Rory Miller. So Rory... I, I knew this like on a certain sense, but how he conceptualized it was was perfect. So social violence is that kind of violence that happens in a social context. It's usually about a pack hierarchy or how you know dick measuring, like how big is your dick. It's where you are amongst other people, and, and it's in a social context, and it almost always comes with instructions of how to avoid it. That's from Mark. Yep. Uh, Mark McKeown. If you are in a bar, you can almost always not fight. It's almost always there. And and to not tell you that is just a, a, a disservice to you. It's, <clears throat> excuse me. It, I, I would tell people all the time when I would keep people out, you know, from fighting. It's like, look, dude, I watched all this and you were a willing participant in the shit talking. You know, and there's usually a, a, a progression. Usually most people can't go from zero to 100. I never really had that problem. Uh, I could always just be doing whatever and go right to violence. I never really had to walk through the steps. That was like one of the few advantages that I had. I'm not a really big guy. Um, so I I was able to just like get off uh, pretty quickly. A lot of people have to psych themselves up to fight. Uh so there's like a big talking trash and you get a little pushing and then so you can just see it just and it's working the door. You you that's where I would tell door guys, 
this when I would train new 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 guys working the door. Uh, when I say door guys, a bouncer. I'm not sure. Yeah, about yeah. It. But this is where you you have a chance to to cut off the 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 flow. Use your words. You know, use your use your and and, and this goes if you're just a patron. This is yeah. where you have a chance to disengage. Most people, most men, don't really want to fight. They don't. They want to be seen as willing to fight. They want to be seen as not a bitch. Yeah. So to be, to be, uh, 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 I guess. They, if they wanted to fight, they'd be fighting. That's what I would tell new door guys. If, 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 if those guys wanted to really fight, you wouldn't be, they wouldn't be talking. They'd be fighting. What they're doing is they're posturing. They're blowing themselves up. They're showing everybody around them that they're tough, that they're not somebody to mess with. It's about social status and pecking orders, you know, whatever. If they, if it was really down to really serious, you know, down to the nut cut, if, if it was down to that, they would be thrown. Yeah. So if you see them talking, you need to cut that off. If you're, if you are a patron and you see this like little escalado game playing where it's just going, that's your opportunity to back off. And it almost always is easy uh, in a, in a in normal sense, the hard cost is here. And yeah. I'm not going to lie to you. I've, I've had opportunities to walk away when I didn't. And, and from a tactical perspective, it's, it's a bad idea. It's a yeah. bad idea tactically, but it's really hard to teach, to talk your ego. And it's all ego. It's all ego, but it's very hard. And, and a lot of guys that talk about de-escalation and, and avoidance, they're completely correct, but they don't, I, I don't think they really address the hard problem of how you have to live with yourself. Yeah. It's essentially what you're basically saying is that guy just shoveled me a bunch of shit and I had to eat it and walk away. Yeah. And the, 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 brand, the little voice in your head calling you a coward or whatever, it, it's a lie but it's a very, very, very convincing one. Well, I'm, I'm going to throw this back at you. Uh, at one, one of the things you said, as, I, <laughs> as, you, as you add your, the, you know, um, the alcohol level in your blood, it needs to go up. Um, we talked about this a long so far, time ago. Done. Down there. That's pretty good. Uh, I mean, for the folks watching, uh, you know, my bottle well, is, that, that is, is... That is a tremendous scotch. I cannot argue. The Glen going ten years is a is um I had a twenty one as a gift a few years oh, ago and it's it's just pricey. gorgeous. It's really good. It's really good. It was not as pricey as it is today, but then my whole family pitches in for my Christmas gift and and then I add a little bit myself and that was like in two or three years ago and and I was um, very much in love with the Glen going from then on. <laughs> and uh, Barry Barry gave me a uh, Lafroy thirty year. Oh, that's when, I, when I visited him in San Francisco, he had bought it because he'd signed a book deal or whatever. Our, our mutual friend, Barry Eisler. So we, fun fact, me and Wim were both bad guys in one of Barry Eisler's books. Barry yes. called me and asked me if, I, if, if, if he could use me as a bad guy. And I'm like, I have one requirement, Barry. And he's like, what's that? So I want to die a horrific death. I want to die like, <laughs> terribly. And he's like, I think I can help you but he gave me a 30 year Lafroig. And I, the 10 year Lafroig is like if you don't have any dirt like directly available to rub onto your tongue. Yeah. <laughs> the same thing. The 30 year, oh my God, what a difference. I, I spent many an evening and night in Barry's living room yes. <laughs> drinking very good whiskey. <laughs> Amazing. Very fond memories. My friends that introduced me to Scotch did me no favors whatsoever because <laughs> now it's like, now I think that it's okay to spend $100, $150 for a bottle. Like, when did that become okay? Yeah, it's the same here. That's that's why the, this one, the Glen Coin, is like 45 bucks or something. Yeah, yeah. And I'm good. like, yeah, and, and, it's, and it's good. It's, it is, I mean, right? Yeah, no, what I was going to give, give me your, your feedback. Yeah, uh, is uh, a very long time ago, we were in Brussels in a bar and, and you gave this, this really good point on uh, during the discussion. You said, stick to the mission. Yes, always. And Number the mission one. is, uh, and I turned that into, uh, you have to have a personal mission. My personal mission. No, the is, mission. Now that's, that's, that's this uh, actually tattoo right here. 
So this one right here, I don't know if you can see it. It's it's in it's in Elder Fruit, Arkansas. It's in the runes, the Viking rune. That's our first tactical principle uh, at the agency that I worked, which is number one is know the mission. Yeah. Know the mission. And is your mission to get your – are you with your family? Well, in my opinion, mission number one should be getting your family to safety. That's the yeah. mission. Yeah. Are you doing a job? Then that's your mission. Are you just – in a bar having a couple of drinks. Now your mission's a little bit more nebulous, right? <laughs> but what is your mission? Is your mission self-defense? And never forget, people, I cannot stress this enough. Self-defense is a legal concept. Yep. Self-defense makes no sense outside of the law. I can tell you about self-defense. I hear so many martial arts instructors talk about self-defense and everything they say has no grounding in the law well if you don't know what the laws are where you live then you're doing self-defense by ignorance yeah because you don't know if you're really doing self-defense you know like self-defense here me in texas is significantly different than if i go to like say boston and i'm saying within the united states i can't even speak to you know like brussels or you know whenever i'm going i, I met you in in frankfurt germany or whatever those are whole completely different paradigms for me, you yeah. know, because I don't even know what, what, what the laws are there. You don't know what the laws are where you are. And if your self-defense instructor is not talking to you about laws, I don't think they're really teaching you self-defense. Yeah. That would be like me teaching you how to drive a car. And all I teach you is how to turn the steering wheel and work the pedals. And maybe if you have a gear shifter, but I don't teach you what a stop sign is or a traffic light or what a speed limit is. If you don't know what the laws are, how can you operate on the road? Yeah. It's the same thing. Well, and, and um, I wrote the article a, a, a long time ago and I'll, I think it's like seven tips for self defense for men. And um, I'll put a link in the show notes to that one. And, and that's the last one is, is, you need to have a personal mission. Mine is very simple. It's every time I get up and I go out of the house, um, I'm going to do whatever it takes to get back home to my loved ones and live an awesome life. And that's, right. and that's the mission. And anything that gets in between that, let's not go there. Which means that a whole lot of bullshit I just let slide. And, and you know, obviously, my ego gets involved. And I'm like, Bim, there's no That's point. what you have to orient. Yeah. Um, yes. A few years ago, my kids were still in school and I went to pick them up and this, this guy cuts me off in traffic like an idiot. I mean, I had to slam the brakes or I would have run, uh, run into the back of his car. Uh, and, and, uh, and I honked the horn like, what the fuck? You know, did you not see me or what, what's going on? He flips me off and I'm like, when that happens, for me, it's very simple. I, I have my, my cell phone on the stand. I start recording because, I mean, I know there's a traffic light coming up. So if he gets out, right? So uh, I start recording. Traffic light comes up, one guy gets out, and um, I put on what, what my girlfriend calls my grave digger face. So I take my glasses off and I just look at the guy who's coming, you know, next to next to the car door. And I'm just filming him and looking him dead in the eye, not giving him anything. And he's like, mm, uh, nothing. The driver comes out, he's all agitated, he's calling my mom a lot of names and this and that, same thing. I just give him the same, the same look, like I'm not doing anything. But, you know, <laughs> you, you, you get the vibe. He got the vibe. He got to have a face-saving exit. He got to cuss me out some more. Uh, he went off, took off like a maniac, and I just calmly went on to collect my kids, and we had a wonderful day. Out of my life. We're done. I've, I've even used that same thing. When I, back when I was talking or teaching like new door guys, I would tell them, if you can give a man that almost the same verbiage, a face-saving exit. Yeah. They will and off, that's, that's they will off road, way, right? they will off ramp almost immediately. Like I said, they most people don't really want to fight. They want to be seen as tough. They want to be seen as willing to fight. They don't want to be seen as 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 like just like a, a sidewalk anybody can walk on. If you give them a way out, they'll take it. They'll I, take I, it. I've got another article that I wrote a while a while ago about Peyton Quinn's rules of um, I think it was self defense. Or avoidance, where it's like you know, don't don't insult, don't um, yes, 
you know, uh, I have a hard time with that one. I'm, just, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, dude. I'm not gonna lie. I have a really hard time with that one when I'm getting into it. When I'm in uh, my head, it's it's rough. And it's a bunch of those things. Don't don't insult, don't challenge, and so on. But one of these these rules is, not, and I'll put a link again to the article in the show notes, um, where he says, "Give the guy a face saving exit." Yes. He Maybe can, that's where I stole it from. I probably I steal from the best. I yeah. I, I totally steal from people. You know, oh, yeah, 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 stuff it's, the best. And I just incorporated it into my own little paradigm and then it's just mine yeah. at, at that point. Oh yeah. I, I'm not um, ripping people off. I'm not trying to I have no I have no product to sell, you know. I don't sell product. <laughs> so I'm I'm just selling, doing it for myself, you know. Yeah. So I just I come up with this stuff and I steal from people and I kind of put but, it you know Peyton's one under, of these guys. Yeah. I mean, he's been talking about this kind of stuff like Mark for decades. So it's yeah, a, a lot like of people 30, like 30 years. Up. Yeah. I remember reading this stuff when I first started the border patrol, you know. Because you're dealing with a lot of, of disparity of force. Yeah, I had a gun, and a lot of times I didn't. But sometimes I was arresting more people than I had bullets. So you start like learning like how to control people in groups. Like, okay, how can I control a group of people? And that to me kind of then I, t- I took that, and then when I went to like counterterrorism and and I'm starting doing stuff as, as an air marshal. Now, like, how can I take that experience and then find, you know, and, and filter it through a smaller paradigm? Now, I don't have to worry about so many people, but now yeah. they may be armed or you know, whatever. And then when I took that to the door, when I took that to the bar, it's like you still have like a customer service like element of your job. You can't just call everybody a motherfucker that you bump into, even though you may want to. Um so you still have to talk to people in a, in a, in a civil way, even sometimes when they're calling you a motherfucker, you know, yeah. when you, 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 you know, when, when COVID happened, people fucking lost their minds. You know, I had, I had people like literally swing punches. I got into fights with people because they didn't want to wear a mask Yeah, because they were in that. And I'm not being political. I don't care what your politics are. It doesn't are. matter. I'm saying at that point, we were trying to stay open. And we had to do certain things in order to stay open. Yeah. And I would tell people, I don't, have a, I don't have a political opinion when I come to work. When I come to work, I'm just trying to do everything for, for the safety of the, the – the, the, actually, the safety of the staff is my number one priority. Number two was the, 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 the safety of the, of, the, the, of the consumers, the customers. Yeah. And then keeping the bar open. And you know, safety at the bar. Like we have to keep do all the things we need to do in order to, to maintain uh, our our status as a, as, a, as a, a business. But I had a guy literally just we were arguing, and he 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 called me every name that there could be called. And I'm like, okay, I'm I'm done. It's not a negotiation or discussion, dude. You either do it or you leave. And he was kept on going, and then he just swung at me. Yeah, you know. That's just kind of how it went back in, you know, at, at that time. But if you, it's hard to hear those things about yourself and not not respond yeah. in that ego way. And it, it takes training. It's one of those things. I mean, um, I, I give two examples. So when I when I teach self defense uh, seminars, this is this is an exercise I always do. We talk about exactly this. Like, okay, stick to the mission. The mission is get home safe. Somebody calls your names. Who the fuck cares? Your ego will be engaged, but you can train yes. your ego as well. Hard, hard, yeah. hard, hard to deal with that, but you have to. One of the things I do is I, I ask somebody, okay, who who can shout and cuss people out real well? There's always somebody. So I'm like, okay, you, middle of the group. I go down. I sit down on my knees. I kneel down. I put my hands behind my back, and I said, you sitting on the side, you're the timekeeper. One minute, and you say stop, and you start, and you say stop. Guy in front of me is towering over me. I am at my weakest with my arms behind my back on my knees. And I say, I want you to cuss me out with the worst I'll possible way. I'll cash money to see this, Wim. I would pay <laughs> cash money to see this happen to you. Oh, my God. Yes, please. Please make next, this happen. Anyone next, out there as a recording this, please. And <laughs> Next time I'll make a recording. Uh, and I say, you know, guy, keep going. When the guy, uh, the timekeeper says, stop, you stop. And I mean... The guys are just literally almost spitting in my face the most horrific insults that you can imagine for a minute straight. I just look them in the eye, stay calm, stay relaxed. And then the time you says stop. And I'm like, 
sir, I understand, but unfortunately, I still can't let you in. So you could just gonna have to step back now. Thank you very much for your cooperation. In about this tone. And my point is that, look, um, it's, you, it doesn't have to be that, it doesn't have to be the job. It can be some lunatic or some asshole within a, you have a fender bender or something along those lines. Um, yes. And, and somebody's screaming at you. You can be professional about it if, even if he isn't, if you train for it, if you train to handle your ego and there's not going to be a hundred percent success rate, but, but you, you can get better at this. And I'll give the you guys, this is, a, this is important stuff. You know, it, it sounds like a bunch of bullshit. I, I get that. And I'm going to give you like, like physical stuff that I've learned at the job. You know, I'm going to tell you stuff that I saw, but the main thing that I, I, I can't stress to people enough. If you don't own your brain, yeah. if you don't own your own responses, how are you going to own his right? Fight. If you need to fight, if it's important enough to fight, fight. I mean, there, there's a line in, in my, in my head that will not be crossed. Yeah. And if we come to that line, we're throwing down. That's just, that's just going to be the way it is. Whether I win or lose, irrelevant. We're throwing down. And at the end of it, you're going to know you're in a fucking fight. But you, and I can't tell you what that line is or isn't. That's up to, 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 to each person. Each person sets their own stuff. I try to say like, like here's the principles and then you have to take those principles and then apply them to your own personal uh, situation, your own yeah. personal life. I don't know what that is. I don't know if it's professional or, or social. I, I can't tell you. So I can't give you a, 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 a day by day checklist to go off of. All I can say is like the, if you don't have the ability to, to control your own responses no. to other people's aggression you are now playing their game and they're not no. playing your game what, what i tell my guys played my game yeah and i'm not gonna lie to you that that, that it's not hard of because course. i'm a human being and and i have a lot of internal anger you know and and it's it's very easy sometimes easier than i wish it could be to, 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 to fire that up, you know, to, 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 uh, initiate that. I don't want people being able to reach into my brain and, and yeah. do things to me that I don't want them to do. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So the better you can immunize yourself against other people, like using some kind of like viral for, for of a weird mood, like a viral mind attack, you know, it's almost like that they're reaching in when you respond in that way, you're not responding tactically. You're not right. responding in the best way. You're, you, you are just responding emotionally. Yeah. And emotion can be a powerful thing, but it can also lie to you. Well, what I, what I tell my students some, sometimes is that, you know, if you're not in control of yourself, somebody else is. Correct. And it's going to be the other guy. He's not, he doesn't have your best interest at heart. And that applies to all the technical stuff that you can do, how you perform techniques, how you move, what you do, and so on. Uh, tactical choices, but also the, the psychological and emotional aspect. If, if you are not in control of, your, of those things, that guy will use that against you. And, and it's funny, yesterday I posted something on my Facebook. It's also fear, Wim. Yeah, yeah. Also fear. That, it, that stuff they're doing is trying to instill a fear response into you to lock you down, to freeze you. Yeah, but uh, uh, for instance, let, let, if, if you look, just look at social violence and where it's just like this, this some guy, I mean, the, the, the archetypical example, you bump into a guy's shoulder, he spills his beer, he makes a thing out of it, and it starts escalating, and both of you very quickly end up in I have a, a story about that, by the way. Right. <laughs> We're going to get to that. Um, both of you end up with this, this, this gut feeling of like, who the fuck do you think you're talking to? And you're gonna make you're gonna prove a point. And if the training that I just mentioned before, like you know, kneeling down, get, getting cast out, it's like the whole point of that kind of stuff, amongst many other things you should should do to train that, is that you disengage from that feeling as soon as you notice it. And and you literally call it it's it's the monkey talking in my ear. 
it's the monkey jumping up and down trying to scream me into this fight yes. that I don't want to have. The monkey and drives it, and the bus. It, and it, it happens in violence, but it can happen in other things as well. And in and, your in your professional life, in a business, it can well, happen yeah. in a relationship because it's 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 the monkey it's only human. cares about status. Yeah. It only cares about where it is in the in the pack hierarchy. I'm the biggest monkey. I'm you know, it comes at you like really whereas back to the social asocial, like okay, okay, asocial violence, monkey's not even in the equation. Yeah, no, there's a predator. You are a resource. Afraid. You are a resource. You have money that I want or a car that I want. If it's a woman, it may be rape. She may be the resource, right? It, it has nothing to do with status. No. It has everything to do with what you have. So you have to kind of differentiate between, the, between those things. But if you are in the social violence realm, and they can't affect you socially. The power that gives you, exactly. I, I can't. I wish, I wish I had that Zen-like ability to just absorb it. And I've done it. Don't get me wrong. I've been there in my life, but it. No, it, it, it's not easy. And, I wish I could. And that's you know? why I said, you know, even if you work real hard at this, it's never hundred percent. Yes, but that's it's, correct. It's, it's worth. The, the I wish it was though, because the power <laughs> gives you. The power gives you is immense. Dude, when somebody I'm, is giving you all of the shit inside of them, they're just just vomiting on that to you, and you're just like completely unaffected. Yeah. I mean, like, okay, and yeah, yeah. and then you then you realize it's like it's almost like if you give the guy the best shot you can give him right on the chin, <laughs> and he just looks at you and just like, and. Yeah. Anything else? Well, here's what I, I wanted, like, wanted, wanted, wanted to say is, um, so holy shit. Two, two days ago, this, this student of mine said, you know, you, 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 you avoid confrontation, you avoid conflicts. I'm like, it's true. And people often misinterpret why. There's a variety of reasons. I've got a big temper. Yeah, I spent the last 30 years controlling it. Most people Damn. haven't seen it, but it's there. It's still there. It never went away. And I know it gets me in trouble if I let it, let it happen. So I work really hard at controlling it. I'm a big, big guy with an ugly face. So, and I do martial arts and self-defense stuff. I do MMA, I do all that kind of stuff. So I would be the walking cliche of the martial arts asshole if I right. let myself go in these kind of situations. Um, and I've got nothing to win and a lot to lose. But I said, here's the thing though, all, all the limitations that I put on myself are there for the other guy's safety, not mine. Because I know myself, I said, when I, dis when, when I finally give myself permission, like, okay, it's worth it, then I'm going to take up my big blunt axe, not a sharp one, a blunt one, because it's got to hurt, and I'm going to start chopping. And it's going to be 100% then. There's, there's no wind-up, there's no pumping myself up to, no, 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 no. We, we, we're well past that. And I don't want to be that guy, so I don't want to go there. And um, I have all a vested interest in training myself to avoid that now. The downside is that you often encounter people who see that as weakness. And I'm going to talk about that. Keep and, and, and that's the example that I want to give that I didn't, that I told my student, but I didn't tell uh, on Facebook. I worked for Technogym. Uh, I worked with them for, for, for about 10 years. And I would say, uh, Techno which place? Technogym, the fitness equipment. It's like the, one of the that. biggest fitness equipment companies out there. there. I use barbells. I, I use barbells, dude. So okay. I don't know. It's, it's an Italian company. They've got great equipment. It's expensive, okay. though, but it's really, really good. And I used to uh, go to clients and, and gyms to teach them with the new equipment and, and all that kind of stuff. Right. So I'm going to this different part of Belgium that I haven't been before. And, this, and I have some contact with the Technogym sales rep for that area. You know, some email stuff, this and that. There's this club I have to go to, this gym, and I have a meeting with uh, the guy who runs it to just discuss, okay, what do you guys need? What kind of training do you need? Blah, blah, blah. The sales rep doesn't need to be there. He has zero um, positive influence on that meeting. He okay. shows up anyway. I had never met okay. the guy. So, and he, and I didn't know he was coming. So I'm, I'm early. I'm sitting waiting on, on the uh, response, the guy running the place. And the sales rep comes in. I'm like, okay guy's here interesting he walks up to me he introduces himself i say hi my name's wim um second thing he says to me you know wim uh, i'm a blowhard i'm like i'm a blowhard uh, yes like, i i, I understood <laughs> the word i like i'm not understanding the context okay that was my reaction i'm like 
well, if you say so, <laughs> that was my response. I said, you, you know, see all this stuff here? I did that. I'm like, okay. okay you did. Well, right. you know, my thought was like, at best, we could say that you sold the gym all this equipment and they did all the work to get the members in. But by all means, if you want to believe that. Hey, take credit. Whatever, dude. And he goes on this spiel about how awesome he is. I'm like, no, no, good for you. And that's about it. Right. The meeting starts. Um, I, I asked my questions and the whole meeting that sales rep is just, he's not needling me, but I'm the butt of the joke. And I'm like, it's good. I'm here to do a job. But obviously I filed him like under the asshole category. Right. So a few weeks later, I have that, that um, the training with, uh, with all the, the coaches at that gym. Sales rep guy shows up again. He's not, he, he doesn't have to be there. There's nothing he can contribute, but he's there again. Fine. We get there. Uh, I see him there. Like, okay. I ask where we, where's the, where's the, uh, the meeting room? He said, oh, it's in the next building. Okay, we walk over. The guy comes with me, the sales rep guy. We don't find the meeting room right away. So we go upstairs to the first floor. Immediately, somebody comes out, very aggressive. What are you doing here? I'm so, Excuse me, sir. We're looking for room X. Uh, we're not finding it. Yeah, that's not here. That's downstairs. Like, my apologies. We're going away right now. Just relax. We're walking away. The guy, sales rep, is like, you know, William, that guy was ready to kick your ass, you know? Don't you think so? I mean, he was looking really, really angry. He could kick your ass. And I just, I stopped walking and I looked at him and said, you know, it's been a while since I put somebody in the hospital, but I haven't forgotten how. <laughs> and, and he's like, oh, oh. And I, yeah. And I keep walking. He never said a word. He stayed for 10 minutes. And then he's like, oh, I have to go. So amazingly, like, I bet you were not the butt of the joke anymore. <laughs> no. And this is something, this is something that a lot of people don't understand. And like if you've played, if you've swam in deep waters, right? You kind of know when you bump into another shark. Yeah. I remember when I so the first time I met Rock was through you. Ten seconds of talking to Rock, which is a mutual friend of ours, Wim's friend actually that I met, met through Wim. I mean, I know right away what I'm dealing with. You know, when you got meet a guy like you or Poncho, or I know what I'm dealing with almost immediately. It doesn't take a long time. Yeah. Clint, yeah. you know, some of our mutual friends. If you've sw I guess, if you've swam in those waters, you know what a shark is and what isn't. There's a lot of guys that'll swim around pretending to be a shark, but they're not. They're, they're just, they're, they're not that guy. They want to portray themselves that way. Yeah. But the problem is, is, is when you, um, I don't know how to really articulate this. When, when I was working, I knew when I was dealing with somebody serious, yeah. even when they're drunk, even when they're not at their like best. I've told a lot of guys, like, look, man, I, I can tell you're a tough guy. But since I've been talking to you, you have fallen down twice. You're so drunk, you cannot stand up. It's not going to be a fight, man. And it's not because you're not a tough guy. You are a tough guy. I can tell. Just not right now. Right now, you're, you're drunk. This is going to be a, an ass whipping. Please, let me just get you home. Let's just, like, stop this and just let's just call this a day. And then every once in a while, you 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 bump into a real jaws. You jump in, you bump into somebody that you're really now swimming in deep waters, and you have to have that experience to know that you're bumping into it. Your in your example, your your little rep guy had no idea what he's dealing with, mm. and the, the the issue is is a lot of times when you are showing restraint people misinterpret that because they don't know what's under the water. They don't know what's swimming down there. They don't know what kind of shark they're dealing with. And they think now that they're in the powerful position. They think that now, because you are backing down that now that they now they're the, the Billy badass, you know, there was a, a I can't even remember what, what, what book series it was, but there was a book series that I read a long time ago that stuck with me that there, there was a, a, a guy 
and how it was expressed is he only raised his hands to kill. Yeah. The only time he ever raised his hands, it was to kill you. Anything else just washed past him. He didn't care. The, but when it came time to kill and he raised his hands, it was it was to kill you. And that's when you're dealing with a real monster. And there are people out there in the world that are like that, guys. If you don't know that, there you may have sat next to them in the in the the train or and you have no idea what you're sitting next to. Uh, do, do that's, that is a terrifying thing. Yeah, do things about but, that. So one of my favorite series is Justified, Real and Givens, who, who plays a, a martial awesome series. I mean, Elmer Leonard was was a master of the craft. Yes. Um, and there's several. He does really good in Mandalorian too. If you're not seeing the Mandalorian, he's also in the Mandalorian. I, I he's a very yeah. similar character. You need to, by the way. You need oh, well. to. Um, there's 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 several scenes in which Rayland is is he puts his hand on his on his, on his gun or is about where he shows it's like look you know um, if 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 I'm gonna draw, I draw I'm gonna put you down I'm gonna put you down I'm, I'm gonna kill you I'm gonna shoot you and I should kill I've done and then basically and he lets it lets it be understood that like I've done this many times. It's not my first rodeo. Maybe it's yours, but it's not mine. We'll and come back to this whim. I had an actual almost, almost Givens. I almost had my Raylan Givens moment. And it was a guy who pulled a knife and I will come back to that. Yeah. If you want. Yeah, sure. Of course. I mean, um, and and the point is is that if 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 it comes to that, a lot of these guys that we're talking about, they'll just fucking go. Um, there was many years ago, um, I was trading with this bunch of hard asses and um, there was this one guy that I hadn't seen before, but I knew who he was because, uh, you know, one of, one of the people that I trained with that explained like, okay, this guy's going to be there. He used to be one of the biggest gangsters that was walking around in the country. Um, what kind of gang? Sorry? What kind of gang? What, what oh, gangster, uh, ro- like how? Uh, ro- robberies. Okay. You know, uh, armored cars, banks, that kind of stuff. And um, and he spent a lot of time in jail. Uh, I think he spent ten years or something because he actually killed a cop for in, who was infiltrating his gang, um, going undercover and and basically slaughtered the guy. I mean, long story short, you met that guy. He's he's polite. There is no fucking way that he can hide what he what is. he is. Right. He's, he's you've you've got guys who can, but uh-huh. he couldn't. And and I argue hold on, hold on, that he will, he will, he can hide it to people who don't know the signs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People, the, the ability to self rationalize is infinite. People yeah. can rationalize to their brain anything, and this is one of the things you know. This is as a martial arts instructor, and this is another Peytonism is like never deny that it's happening. Yeah. Whatever's happening right now, it is very easy to tell us lies in our brain. That no, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. This is why when you tell women, don't get into a car with a guy. Yeah. Like if a guy is like pulling a knife on you or gunning you, don't get in the car. If he tells you to get in the car, do not get in the car. Because where they want to take you is what's called a secondary crime scene. It's going to be isolated. They're going to be safe to do whatever they want to do to you with with with, with a very little. Uh, yeah. Opportunity of being caught, whereas where it's happening when they're where when they're threatening you, it's in public probably. But it's very easy to lie to yourself that it's okay to get into the car. It's the safe move yeah. to get in the car. It's the least safe move. But your brain will lie to you in that moment. And there are guys when that will lie to themselves when they when they bump into that real jaws, that real shark. And they'll think that their politeness is weakness. And I don't understand it. I never saw it myself, but I've seen it so many times yeah. that I can't. I, then no, I, d- don't be that guy. Don't be that guy. <laughs> don't it's, be that guy. With, with that guy, I mean, the, the way I always describe it is that he looks at you and it's like a rifle scope that is pointed at you. It's like he's got a finger on the trigger and he's just deciding like what's the wind uh, velocity and what's the angle and you are alive at his at his discretion. He is yeah. restraining himself from killing you at that very moment. Yeah, he's just you know I wouldn't even call it sizing you up. 
he's just going through the math of what it takes to take you out with with very little uh, doubt in his mind that he can do it because he's done it, he's done it before. Our buddy Aaron is like that. So Aaron, Aaron is like one of the things we've talked about when Aaron's a multi tour. Yeah. Or he pretty much been there, done that, got a guy multiple wars. And Aaron's like, I don't I get emotionally involved. Yeah. So he doesn't have an emotional like content for when he's walking up to you. It's just like he's walking up to you to ask you for a drink or say hello. But just then when he gets there, he kills you. Yeah. So you don't have that angry person walking up to you where you can feel that emotion coming and you don't get wary of it. And then just right there, then then you're just done. It's just, it's emotionless. It's just, like you said, it's just a math problem. But it's solving a math problem. I think um, an imperfect portrayal of this is in the Equalizer movie with Daniel Washington, the the Russian, basically. I see what you're saying, yeah. When they have this interesting, you know, he, Daniel Washington goes into the restaurant and takes out the bodyguard and then just talks to the guy. And, And where the Russian guy is basically like, you know, you're just a piece of lint to me, you're nothing, yeah. you know, and so on. It's it's Hollywood's portrayal of what we're talking about. It's, 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 hard, it's hard to articulate. It's very hard to articulate. Yeah. But when you deal with somebody who's, they're not emotionally involved in, in the equation, and that's what I talked about, the power that you have when that person is very emotionally involved and they're cussing at you, and you're just looking at it like two plus two equals four. Like yeah. How can I just drop you from where you are? When you're when you're the the aggressor and you're feeding all that emotion and it's just it's just not getting past the shield, it weakens that person. The problem is when you are the other person and you're getting responded, you're getting emotionally responded. It's very hard to see that power that you have if you don't respond. It's just like we've all seen it in our lives. So if you see somebody who's wrong, they are. Yeah legitimately wrong but they double down on their position and they entrench themselves in the position to outsiders they live weak yeah. but to themselves they look strong because the brain is telling you if i admit weakness if i admit that i'm wrong then that is now weak of me to do so but outsiders are like oh, no he, he's wrong you just admit you're wrong but how how if you if you're honest with yourself how easy is it to admit that you're wrong? Get online, get into an argument, somebody. Tell me the times online, folks. Tell me the times that you've gone online and said, "Yeah, I was wrong." Zero. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's 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 the number. Nobody likes to admit that they're wrong. Nobody. Zero people like to admit that they're wrong. But if you're on the outside of it, you see that it's really not that much of a weakness. To admit that you're wrong, you actually look like the better person. You look like the smarter person. Like you were wrong, and now you are removing yourself from that position as quickly as possible to get to the right position. But it's but also it's it's a sign of maturity. Is that I mean, because if not getting to the point where you can easily admit you're wrong means that you have a god complex because you're always right. That 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 right. is insane. That's insanity. Nobody is always right. Nobody knows everything. But when, what if I want to be God? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, no, I'm not no, saying I want to be a benevolent dictator of the world. <laughs> However, I want to be benevolent dictator of the world. Let's just say God, right? <laughs> <laughs> Let, let's talk about the real and givens moment that you almost had. What was that so, like? What got me out of bars? Um like I said, I, I worked at this one bar for a year and two months, and I had like 14 fights, two knives. This is one of the knives and, and, and one gun. So I'm working. Uh, the, the, my week started. 2021 was like the worst year of my life. Um, just understanding the personal where I'm at personally. I got sick with COVID. I lost like almost like, like 16, 17 pounds. Literally the day I got better, my dog died. Been together 15 years. My little guy died. Three weeks later, my little brother died with COVID. A month later, I get shingles. 
which if you never had shingles, you don't ever, ever, ever want to have, which is like chicken pox come back. Yeah, Mine yeah. was on my, my waist. It was blistered. One of That's the most, horrific, one of the most yeah. horrific things I've ever gone through. The pain is, is I can't even express to you. That happened in three months. And the relationship that I was in at the time had just fallen apart in about the most worst way. And I found out that the whole thing was just like uh, a terrible lie. And just letting you know that at that moment in time, I'm not really, I'm not really good. And that the, the night that started this is when I found out that all of my relationship had been bullshit. It was a, a baby shower. And this is, something to to teach to your martial arts people um these two guys get into it i know both of them um i know from different from different ways one of them i have long joked that uh, of the strip that i worked at the top five guys i don't want to fight george is one two and three <laughs> uh george is ex-military did a lot of shit you know in iraq back in the day been there done that he's not he's my height so like five foot ten but i'm about 190 pounds george is about 240 and hits like a truck the guy like fought three cops and won that kind of thing you know <laughs> i mean he's just a monster he works the door he works he's a bouncer I, I told George, he's a good friend of mine, a good friend of mine. I slept on my couch. I'm taking him home drunk. George, go to sleep, you know. I told George, I would love to fight him if it was like Valhalla, where we would fight, and at the end of it, we would all be healed up, and then we would just drink and winch all night, right? Um, but otherwise, like, no, I'm not signing up for that. If I have to fight him, I have to fight him. That's the job. But I don't want to. I, I don't want to add that to my life, right? This other guy apparently did. <laughs> so him and George get into this argument. The other guy, they get into a fight. I break him up. They leave. The other guy leaves. George stays. An hour later, I'm sitting there. at, And I, my position was on the patio outside. So this guy comes back and walks past me. Doesn't say a word, just walks past me. So I turn around, look at him. And he grabs a chair picks it up over his head and walks into the bar. <laughs> this is not something you see every day, right? So I like run down there. I grab the chair. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? It's like, well, that motherfucker can't talk to me this way. I'm like, bro, you're not in the WWE. You cannot <laughs> hit him on the chair like it's a fucking ladder match. Like the loser has to shave his head and leave Texas for a year. No, no. No. And he's like, well, he can't talk to you. I don't care how he talks to you, dude. You can't hit him in the chair with a chair. You can't do it. He's like, well, I'm going to wait for him outside. I'm like, oh, you don't want to do this. And he's like, well, no, I do. I'm like, trust me, you, you, you don't want to do this. He's like, well, I'm going to wait for him. I'm like, okay. And what happens is somebody goes and tells George that that's what happened. And I'm when I hear it, I hear George, I see him actually walk into the door with like intent. I could, I could feel it. I'm like, George, where are you going? He goes like, fuck that guy, Monty. I'm going to handle it. I'm like, no, no, no. And so I'm trying to catch up to him. I'm running, trying to catch up to him. And he walks out the door and he goes, and I see him walk into the guy. And I don't even know to this day if the guy knew who he was. And I hear George go, you going to hit me with a chair, motherfucker? And comes all the way back hits him before I can catch him, breaks his jaw immediately, guy's out instantly and goes backwards. Wim, I will never hear his head hitting that, that concrete. He sounded like a gunshot. Yeah. I thought he was probably dead. And I see him start twitching. I'm like, oh, shit, fuck, he's alive. So I get to him. George is left. And then we have a whole another discussion later. But I get this guy in the recovery position. I'm trying to like keep him alive. And so the MTs get there. He's bleeding that blood out of his brain that is not the normal blood color because it's got brain fluid in it. 
Yeah. And I know it's bad at that point. And long story short, he was in the hospital for three days, had his jaw wired shut. He had bleeding in his brain. They sent him home. Two days later, he had to go back to the hospital because he didn't know what his kids' names were and Jeez. didn't know where he was. He's okay now, but like I told George, he's like, you're lucky, dude. You, could, you have shit to lose. You know, that guy could have pressed charges, and had he died, charges certainly would have been pressed on you. Yeah. Yes, the guy was waiting on you. Yes, the guy had made some statements, but you didn't have to go out there the way you did it. And, and it, that would have been a very tough case for me uh, as a use of force expert to argue. Um, you could have left other mechanisms and other ways to leave without having to address this guy. You went out there with the express purpose of addressing him. And while on a moral level, maybe this guy had what was coming to him. He played the fuck around and find out game, right? I can't argue that. But on a legal level, if that guy would have died, did you have to do what you did? That's my Monday. <laughs> Actually, it was Tuesday at 1.30 in the morning. So Monday into Tuesday. Had been a great slow Monday until that shit. Saturday, my railing given to my wife. So I'm working. Um, there's a, a biker in there, uh, a guy named Patrick. Super great guy to me, has always been a black guy, just so you know. Um, he's a one percenter. Do you, do you know what yeah, one percenter? Yeah. He's a one percenter. He's an he's a actual motorcycle club. The one percenter, like banditos, uh, yeah. uh, Hells Angels, whatever. He's, he's, he's an outcast. And he's also an ex-Marine. And Patrick is usually super awesome with vets. He's able to talk them down and help them. There's another guy in there I read as a vet. I'm not 100% certain, but that's the vibe I'm getting off of him. And he is fucked up mentally and fucked up physically drunk. And so I see him, Patrick, talking. And so I'm like, okay, cool. Patrick's got this. About a minute later, I'm behind the bar talking to the bartenders. And these guys are on the side of the bar. And I hear Patrick, get the fuck away from me, motherfucker. And I look up and Patrick has shoved him away so i don't i really know how i don't know if i can do this on on some vision yeah for the for the listeners we're, we're so, best to see this yeah, on youtube for listeners, I'm, trying, i'm trying to do this visually so i'm trying to articulate it so i am standing behind the the guy that i think is a vet but off his left shoulder that way i can see He is standing in front of Patrick. So Patrick's facing him. Two guys facing each other. Sorry. Two guys facing each other. And the the one guy that I'm standing behind, I'm off his left shoulder. So that way I can see now both of them. I can see both of them at this point. But I can't see the one guy's right arm. Yeah. I can't want to watch him. And so they're arguing whether I'm ready to step in. And then Patrick, who's facing this guy, I'm, I'm standing behind the other guy. Patrick says, are you pulling a gun on me, motherfucker? And so I step this way directly behind him, and I see, let me see here. I see he's got his, 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 um, his shirt up like this. So he's like standing like this with his shirt up, and I'm behind him, so I can't really see what he's doing. But normally when you pull your shirt up like that, it's, you're trying to clear leather. So you're trying to clear to get to a gun or, or whatever. And so I just, when, when I'm standing behind him, All I can see is this. Yeah, just just well, lifting up the shirt. Yeah, just lifting up the shirt. Well, what I what I could see is his arm like chicken winged, right? So he's like this. So I just went behind his arms and pull up, put him in a in, in a Nelson, a full Nelson, and then cranked down. Yeah. But so when I put him in the full Nelson, it brought his hands up like you know like this. But what I could see was the knife. He had a blade in his hand. He had a knife. Yeah. So when he had pulled, what he had was he had a sheath here. Yeah. He had a sheath and, 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 his, and he, he just pulled the knife. It was a fixed blade knife. It was not a, a folding knife. It was a fixed blade knife, which I still have. I probably should have brought it. Um, 
And so when I when I got him in that chicken wing, I'm cranking down. I see that knife, and so I, I reached up, stripped the knife, walked him outside, pushed him out in the parking lot, and saying, "You know, get the fuck out of here." He's like, he's so drunk. He turns around to me, he says, "Like, what the fuck is that? What'd you do that for?" I'm like, "What do you mean? What did I do that for?" He's like, "Well, well why'd you do that?" I'm like, because you pulled a knife on the guy in there. He's like, "No, I didn't." <laughs> I'm like, yes, you did. I just took it away from you. I watched me do it, you know, and 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 he's he, and he's arguing with me, Wim. And he's like, I, 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 and I'm just like, dude, go. You need to get the fuck out. You're done. You're done. And then he reaches back real fast I, to his back pocket. And so, I mean, I'm I'm like certified security level, you know, like uh, armed security. Plus, I'm a retired federal agent. After a lot of the shit that happened in COVID, I started carrying my gun. No. So when when he reached back, I was all I was already halfway. I already had my so after my after my injury, I have to I have to shoot left hand now. So I'm already halfway out the holster. So I have my gun and I'm already I haven't pulled it, but I've got it like I've broken. Does that make sense? To you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've already broken the holster. So all I'm ready to do is now just to pull and go. So I've already broken. And when he reaches back, I'm already like halfway out. I'm like, this is one of those moments you never get to have the, say the right thing at the right time. You say the cool thing. I actually said the cool thing at the right time. And I was so proud of myself later on. And I, just said, <laughs> and I was just like, you better think about this. Like, if you pull on me, I'm going to beat you. I promise you, I'm going to beat you. I said, you do not want to die in front of flips. And he's just like, man, I'm just trying to see if I got my credit card. I'm like, well, bro, you, you, you need to be moving real slow right now. You just pulled a knife on a guy inside. So if I assume you're pulling that, I don't know what you're pulling, right? And he wants to argue more. I'm like, dude, the, the cops are coming. You're about to go. And so he leaves. And then, of course, he's drunk. And so he hits like a truck on the way out, whatever. But I didn't even know anybody was behind me. And so like later on that night, I'm, I'm, we're cleaning up, you know, we're, we're getting ready to go. And then I hear one of the, the servers go, man, I thought Monty was going to kill that guy in the parking lot. Did he fucking hey, that guy was like reaching back real fast. I thought Monty's about to just do a fucking kill him right there. And I was like, Oh shit. I, I, people saw that, you know, I didn't really know anybody was there, but I had my, my one moment. But then at the end of that week, I was like in, in four days, I had a guy bleeding out of his brain. And I had a guy pull a knife on another guy for a fucking bar argument. And I almost shot him in the parking lot. I'm like, what am I doing? Like, really, what am I doing? Like, if I'm doing this kind of work, I need to be getting paid to do this kind of work. I need to be in armor and, you know, like, like fully, you know, like I carry my gun, but I mean, you know, open care. I, I need to do something different. And that got me out. But the, 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 the value that I got out of that time was other than the resilience. I mean, I was in a bad spot mentally and, you know, it, it was rough, but just the ability to just keep grinding through, but yeah. just to like watch violence happen and, and, and deal with it regularly, because this is the problem with, with, with violence specialists when like how much really time and attention do you have? If I tell you I've been in, and I have been, I've been in two gunfights. How long is that? 30 seconds? Yeah. I have 30 seconds experience. What kind of expert am I? Am, am I? I have 30 seconds. Did I have 30 seconds experience? That's nothing. That's no time at all. But compared to somebody who's never been in a gunfight, maybe that's a lot. So when I was... Actually, when I had the two fights in my previous bars, and, and a couple of them were really good. When I say fights, I don't mean like breaking people up. I did that quite a bit when I talked when we talked earlier about yeah. interdicting between people arguing. They don't want to fight, or they would be fighting. So this is my opportunity to get inside of them and break it up and move them out, whatever, do whatever I need to do. But where I mean, where I went at it with people twice, but fourteen at the other place. And that's what I took away from that is like when I was like crunching that like data, once I got removed from 
the mental aspect of it because it was really messing me up, like fighting all that time. And it was starting to trigger some of my old work stuff I had. Plus, like I said, I was not in a good place you know, personally at that, at that moment. Um, it was just too much. So I had to get out. Um, but when I look back on it now, you know, and I still do now, every once in a while, I'll go work like a, a bar, like a, for a fight night or a concert or whatever. But when I look back on it now, it's like the, the invaluable part to it, the, what really made it worth it for me was just like looking at people fight, looking how it went down and how to get in the middle of that, either for yourself or for them. And to know what the cues are, because if you don't see it coming, it's much harder to deal with than if you see it coming. Yeah. And that pulls back to Peyton's, Peyton's thing of, um, of never lie to yourself about what's happening. But if you're able to tell yourself the truth that like this is about to go bad or what I'm looking at is really happening, that gives you an opportunity to do something. Yeah. Yeah. You just touched on something that I think is critical as well is, is that this kind of stuff takes a toll on you. It doesn't matter what kind of violence professional you are, whether, whether it's, you know, in, in, inside of a government agency or, or like working a bar or anything like that. It's a corrosive environment. Um, yes, and and being a bouncer specifically, I mean, that's kind of, it, it ends up, you know, being the nightlife, as we call it over here. It, it's, it's one of the, one of the, folk, the guys that was in this group of, uh, you know, reprobates that I would used to train with, uh, he worked the bar in Brussels and um, I hadn't seen him, you know, when, when I, you know, stopped, stopped working with that group for a bunch of reasons. Um, I hadn't seen him in a while and I just run into him like, six, seven years later by accident in the gas station. I'm like, dude, how have you been? Uh, and he's the same thing, you know, how have you been? And we talked for like five minutes. He had aged like 15 years in like the five yes. years that I hadn't seen him. And this is something that that I think is not discussed enough from people with people who look at, oh, I want, I want to be a bouncer. I want to have experience. I want to, I want to listen to that. I'm like, sure, but... The best analogy that analogy that I can give you is look at Barack Obama when he enters the White House and when he comes yeah, out. So when he leaves, he's like totally gray and he's aged twenty years and he's, he's this young, you know, good-looking dude when he goes in. Yeah, and and he aged, I mean, two three times the number of years he was in, and it's the because same it, thing. It's 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 spike stress. I mean, yeah. most days you go there, you're going to do nothing. A lot of times yeah. the servers will be like, man, you don't really do anything. You just sit there and drink your coffee or eat your food or read your book or whatever, which is true. But then you go to these huge spikes of adrenaline and you're fighting and you have to come down or, or, you know, what have you. And if that's happening frequently, it's very, very, very stressful. Very, yeah. very stressful. Anyway, so uh, the, the, the point. Yeah. We are now down. Now I'm down a couple of fingers. So yeah, yeah, we're getting there, dude. We're getting. I'm, there. I'm halfway through. For sure, the best conversations happen. Yeah. In vino well, veritas, right? We, in, exactly. In wine well, you know, as 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 you once told me, you can't drink all day if you don't start early. So you do not. You can't drink all day if you don't start in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> this is this is this is true. Now, one, um, one thing I wanted to to oh. to ask as well is that let's just say that you've got this this young hotshot kid who wants to be a bouncer. Okay, if you could just give him like one or two, just, you know, ideas, principles, thoughts in his head before he gets started. First one is, is a reiteration of the same, the first thing I said, if, if guys are talking, if they're doing the, 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 chest, the chest puffing, you know, part of, of, of the dance, that's your chance to get in there and use your words. Your words, how you say things, and how you, you approach things can escalate or de-escalate a fight so easily. Again, if, if they wanted to be fighting, they would be fighting already. At that point, they want to be seen as willing to fight. They want to be seen as tough. Yeah. They want to be seen as, 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 as manly or what have you. I'm not going to get into whether that's toxic masculinity. I, I don't care. I, I really am only interested in, in efficacy. What will get me to the point I want to be at, which is people not fighting in my bar. So that's where, if you can give them that base saving exit where they keep their manhood, 
if you treat them like bitches, you're going to escalate things. To, to you're going to make it worse. If you treat them like like tough, manly guys, more than likely you're going to have a successful de-escalation. You know, you'll be able to get them apart and get them them stuck. The, the other things, just like if it if it's going to go down, it's going to go down. And you'll a lot of that only experience can teaches you. you. You can only really learn that by being in the grind and seeing it enough times. Like, like at this point in my life, if I see a guy, I can just tell you if I can talk it down or if it's going to fight, if we're going to fight. Yeah. And if we're going to fight, I prefer just to like, let's just cut out the middleman and I'm going to initiate the fight. I need him to give me certain things legally he has yeah. to say certain things. Or he has to give me certain certain cues that I can I can now initiate and uh, uh, be legally justified in doing so. But I can tell you when we're going to fight. I can almost always say I'm not perfect, but I'm going to almost always say when we're going to fight. And there are certain cues to, to look for. Um, and we'll get into that, you know, whenever you're ready to like some of the actual physical cues for those of you who have been sitting through all the mental and uh, psychological bullshit, you know, I, I, it's massively important, but it is not the sexy part. People go to martial arts instructors and whatnot to learn the technique. The issue is, is the technique is about 10% or maybe 20% of what you're going to do. The overwhelming majority of what you're going to do is number one, recognizing what the fuck is happening while it's happening. And number two, being able to control yourself enough to implement your game plan to what they're to, to, against their game plan, right? And what Mike Tyson said, everybody has a plan until they get hit in the face. That is 100% correct. It is very hard to implement your game plan and to do what you want to do when some guy is wailing on you. Yeah. You know, that's the tough part. And that's here. That's not what you're really going to find in the gym unless you're getting wailed on in your gym. And most people don't in the martial arts community don't really get wailed on in the gym. They, no. don't, they don't really go and get hit a lot. I think everybody needs to get hit. You need to see that it's not the end of the world getting hit that, you know, the one thing is if you get hit and knocked out, the beautiful thing is you'll never know it. <laughs> you'll never know. I've been knocked out before. I, I never once knew that I was knocked out until I came to and I'm like, what the fuck happened? Oh, you were knocked out. Oh, okay. I mean, that's just the way it goes. It's, it's, it's pain. It, you're still in the fight. Yeah. If you're hurting, you're still going and you're still in it. Whether you have to claw your way back into that position of dominance or whatever, but you're still there. You're still, you're still able to respond. Yeah. A real knockout blow, you won't feel a, a fucking thing. You're just going to be unconscious, and you're going to wake up after a while. Then you will have a headache. But but at, at the moment of getting knocked out, you're not going to know anything. You're just going to be knocked out. Yeah. If you're getting hit and it's sucking like your previous thing, and you're and you're 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 address, you, you're having to absorb that. You're still you're still viable. You're still in the fight. You just have to retake that initiative, and that is a very very hard thing to do, but it's doable. It is doable, yeah. and some of that is training, and some of that is is here. Yeah. But the, the thing is, I can give you, or Wim can give you, or whoever can give you all the training in the world. But if you don't have this shit wired tight, if you don't have it squared away. It's not going to do you any good. I can give yeah. you all the techniques in the world. I can teach you do this, do that. But if you're not able to implement them and have the, the mental fortitude to just like force yourself to do stuff when it hurts, yeah. when it sucks, you know, when you're, when you're hurt, you know, the, 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 the normal human response is just to cover up and just take it. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm just saying, then what? What's your next step? Covering up and taking it can be fine as a tactic. If you if you're just trying to ride that wave and find your time to to to, to, to initiate what you're going to do, 
but that's more of a fighter strategy. I think if you're fighting in the real world, when I say the real world, it's not that I'm not no, no, no. Fighting. Get real. what you that's mean. Obviously, real, but I mean fighting in the world with no ring, with no refs, with no rules. If you're just sitting there taking it, hoping to find your shot, your your moment to leap into uh, uh, this remarkable action. I don't know if that's the best tactic. I don't know. Maybe it is. Maybe it's not. I'm not going to tell you. But know what you're doing when you're doing it. Because yes. If you're getting hit, you need to not be getting hit as soon as possible. <laughs> what, what would be like the if you have to pick two or three signs of that it's about to go down? Because you mentioned that a few times already. Like you can, there's there's signs. Like for the people listening, okay, what should they be paying attention to? And number and one, the guy who stops talking first wins. That's just that's just the fucking truth. The guy who stops talking first wins. So, and again, remember, we're talking social violence. I need to, I need to stress yeah, yeah. that. We're talking about like bar violence. It's like how to not get your ass kicked in a bar or whatever. Yeah. If you're in a bar and something goes down, again, it's social. There are, there are, are, are instructions of how to avoid it. Looking at my girl, no man, I'm sorry, I'm just like zoning out. You know, I had a long day at work, whatever. He dude, you don't fucking belong here. Okay, I'm set. I- I'm gonna leave. The problem with the instructions of how to avoid it is you have to have this. What we talked about earlier, this this has to be wired tight because you're gonna have to eat some shit in your yep. brain. You're going to have to suck up your ego when you're gonna have to tell yourself that I'm not gonna respond to this cocksucker. That is fucking talking all of this shit. Who the fuck does he think he, what the fuck? You know, and your, your brain is going to do all this and you have to have that right. And then if you do, you can get out of the situation that you're in without violence. Am I going to tell you that happens all the time? No, because I have seen people literally sucker punched. Yeah. I watched a girl just sitting there drinking at a bar and another girl walked up and hit, I'm sorry, I'm going to shut the door open. My dog. She thinks I need to scratch her. She's actually right, but um, this girl was sitting at a bar. Another girl walked up and thought that that girl was hitting on a guy she was interested in, and just literally just punched her in the face with a cell phone in her hand. Just hit her in the face with a cell phone, split her nose like open, pretty bad. Literally the worst sucker punch I've ever seen because there was zero, no shit talking, no pre you know attack indicators just walked up and just hit her it happens but it's pretty rare yeah normally there's like some work up to it yeah the work up again is like i said is where you're is where your chance to extricate in that work up the guy who stops shit talking first wins because you got and- how i see it is you have two guys are talking shit this guy says this, the other guy responds back and forth, back and forth, your mama this shit, whatever. And then one guy just decides I've reached, I've I've worked myself up enough sufficiently. Yep. And then once he gets there, then the only thing you're going to see from him is one word responses. He's because his brain is not not working on talking shit. His brain is working on what am I going to do to this guy? Yeah. What's what's my what's my what about what's my plan? What's my movement set? And and so they're talking back and forth, and the guy's like, "Yeah, fuck you, whatever." And then just that's where the punch comes. And then when the punch comes, if that first punch lands cleanly, that's pretty much the fight. Yeah. I'm not saying it's impossible to come back from that. It it is. I've seen it, but it's overwhelmingly if that first punch lands because it's almost always going to be everything is going to be in that punch it's yeah. going to be a big one up it's going to be a big it's going to be it's a sucker punch and if that lands it's really 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 hard to come back from that because they're not going to sit there and let you gather yourself yeah that's next, just the first punch and then the, punch the next five or six what's going to what's going to set yeah. the deal so again, it's not that it's the end of the world. It's not that it's over, but you don't want to be on the recipient end of it because now your your opportunity to, to gain back that initiative is 
in con- I, I can't even tell you how, how much harder it is. Yeah, and and that's Monty's law is that it's never yeah. his turn. If yeah. you take the first turn, you don't give the other guy a turn. Yeah, I don't. It's, it's, it's so, yours. so back in Monty's law, so you see this a lot in sparring. Um, the, the concept in fencing is called right of way. You see this like somebody's already kind of got the offensive going on, and so I'm doing my so the fencers they fight strong side forward, so I'm fencing whatever, and then there's like a lull in the action. And then the other guy, now it's his time to do his thing. Who has the right of way? Well, when I fight, I always have the right of way. <laughs> Even if I don't have the right of way, I have the right of way. So I just never give you an opportunity to get off. Because again, I'm not a big guy. I'm five foot 10, 190 pounds. And that's the biggest pretty much I've ever been in my life. When I was doing a lot of stuff, I was 170, 180 pounds. So not, I don't know, you convert that. Yeah, to, yeah, yeah. yeah. To, to, to kilos, what have you, but I'm not a massive guy, you know? So I, if I give big guys a chance to get off, I'm at a disadvantage because I'm at a disadvantage, you know, muscular size wise. Yeah. I, I do my stuff on, on volume, you know, yeah. so I just don't ever give you a chance and I try to put you in a bad position where I cannot take you down or I can put you in a position where I can grapple you to where I want to control you. Yeah. So it, if I can take you down to control you immediately, I, I, I've done, we, we've talked about that. I've done that. But a lot of times when, when, it, when it comes to like my hands, I, my hand stuff is really because I'm in the control business. I'm not in the beating the shit out of people business. Yeah. And it's not good for your, your bar to just beat the crap out of people. You know, I've done it. I mean, I, I, I've done walked up and you know, like elbowed a guy like on the side of the neck and he's down. That's it. it was one, one shot. It's worked out that way. But I'm not wanting to really beat people up. Yeah, um, yeah. It's not your job. To, it's, it's a, what is the mission? Again, back to know the mission. My mission as a, as, a, as a bouncer is to control. Your mission as a customer is to like defend yourself. So maybe punching is the most, you know, I don't ever tell people on on what tactics to use. I just try to give you principles and then whatever training or life experience you have, then you filter that through the principles and apply them, you know. But uh, the, the, the thing is, if, if I mean, if you as a bouncer start beating the shit out of people, that's going to reflect exactly. badly on, on the bar. Yeah, it's going to cost the bar customers, which is eventually you you are out of a job if that keeps going. I might get, also, I might get, you, I might you, get you, go ahead. charged. I might, yeah, charged, you're right. I might get I'm a criminal charge or and I, and I had that where I took a guy down and 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 put him in a, in a rear naked and I had him and and because he'd swung on me and he he tried to file charges and the detective came and talked to everybody and I know like, he's fine and then he tried to sue me you know, civilly and then the lawyers are like dude no you don't have a you don't have a, a charge but it's still not a fun thing to go through you know yeah yeah and when, when you were in the right I did everything even when I, when I took him down, I took him down and put him in rear naked and I locked it in just for a second, just for a second. I locked it in. And, and so he felt it that I had it, like I had it. And then I backed off and I'm like, you know, bro, I, I, I want you just to leave, just, just go home, you know? And th- this was a different one than I told you before, same, same initiation. And he was an ex-military guy. And I guess maybe the ego or whatever got, yeah, got yeah. into it. And when, whenever he left, when finally got him out, he he tried to, you know, sue me civilly yeah. and then try to charge me criminally. And when the cop showed up, I told him, here's what I did. You know, here's whatever. And they're like, no, you're fine. And then when the detective showed up, I, you know, I already talked to him and I talked to him and he's like, no, you're good. And then the lawyer actually came to me later. He was surprisingly enough, a regular at my bar. And and he was like, hey, my name's going to try to sue you. I'm like, I, I for what? And it turned to be that guy. And now, like, holy shit. That's yeah, not it's, fun. It's, yeah. it's not fun to go through, you know. Even if you're in the right, it's not fun to go through. And and if you beat the crap out of out of patrons, I mean the risk of that kind of hap- that kind of thing goes happening up. to you, it goes way up. Again, and I was in the right. I did everything right. Exactly. I didn't I didn't I didn't crank him, I didn't choke him out, I didn't I put him in the, I didn't even hit him. I just took him down, put him in a rear naked, locked it in for a second. Let it go, and that was the extent of everything. And then that guy tried tried to 
criminally prosecute me and sue me. There was these bouncers in a in a big nightclub in, in over here, and they were Muay Thai guys. I mean, hardcore training, really, really hard. And they Which like is what I've done. Also, I've done Muay Thai. You, yeah, you as well, both of those yeah. Uh, and they like to strike. I mean, in when it was time to put somebody out uh, outside, they I mean, make them leave. They would strike. It was not about controlling. They would right. they would beat the crap out of people. And if you gave them a little bit too much lip uh, before they started striking, or you resisted, or you tried to hit them, they would strike some more. Um, so they were feared. They had this reputation, like you do not want to fuck with these guys. Eventually, one guy um, was going to get kicked out, and he saw that the bouncer was going to kick him out, and he knew that the ass whipping was coming. He freaked out, jumped up, and bit the guy half of his ear off. And then he got his ass whipping. Yeah. But the bouncer still lost a part of his ear. Yeah. And 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 that's what a reputation gets you uh, when when you're a bouncer is that I mean you can be a hard ass that that's fine but if you go out of your way to punish people eventually you know there's going to be some f- form of retribution whether it's that a guy going nuts because he knows he's gonna he's gonna get beaten up and he and he just gets a he says I'm gonna at least make him feel <laughs> that he that he uh, something he right paid a price. And bites your ear off or your nose off, or it's somebody with you know baseball bat to the back of the head when you when you leave work or a shotgun blast. Um, that that's the that's the non-sexy part that a lot of people don't don't seem to realize. We, 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 the we keep the guy out. Uh, he'd been fighting in it. Some of this was, was was self-inflicted. One of the servers, we always had to server stay inside. When we're kicking somebody out, let us handle it. Well, this server came out and talked a bunch of shit while because the guy had been an asshole i mean the guy had deserved to have shit talk to him but this server came out and wanted to make their displeasure known and so as we're kicking him out he's talking shit well this guy fucking punches it like like not quite breaks his nose or pretty close i bust his lip well, okay now you've hit my guy even though my guy kind of had a comment i can't let you hit my guy so now me and this guy and the other, we, we kind of, you know, went at it with this guy a little bit and tuned him up a little bit. And so he gets in the car and as he's driving away, seven shots into the air as he's driving off. So you're just like, well, that could have been us, you know? <laughs> yeah. Those yeah. shots could have been not in the air. Yeah. He could have gotten his car, you know, whatever. And I had a couple other things that happened, you know, in the, in that vein, but <laughs> when you play these games, there's no guarantee where they're going to go. You know, I can tell you that you're going to hit the guy. And he's going to, he's going to drop down and it's just going to be, you're just going to, you're just going to look like a stud. Maybe you hit the guy and he drops down and he cracks his head on the pavement. And now he, he bleeds out. Now you're facing a, some kind of criminal charge. Maybe you hit the guy and he leaves and goes and gets a gun. And he comes back and he shoots up people inside the bar. Maybe you hit the guy and how far do you want to take this? I mean, how many variables do we want to play with this particular game? I don't know. But all I can tell you is, is that you don't know where it's going to go. And that's the downside. And what do you have to lose? What do you have to gain? What's your advantage or what's your disadvantage? What's your mission? What are you yeah. trying to do? And what does that go? And again, that is so easy to talk about when we're sitting here on a, on a, uh, what is this, Zoom? On a Zoom, having drinks. It's so easy to talk about. It's so hard to talk about when you're in the middle of yeah. the emotion of some fucking piece of shit in front of you talking. I don't want to discount that because I have not always responded appropriately. But we're all human. I mean, and... Um, I have not lived up to my own principles. What I'm saying. Nice. And I don't, I, don't, I don't want to discount that. But because a lot of guys do, they sit there and they talk to you as if like, here's here's the principles to live by. They're not wrong. They're correct. But they don't really talk about the cost. They don't really talk about how hard it is. And when you go home at the end of the night and you're in your laying there in your bed and you're safe. Yeah. So you accomplish your mission. But now that little part of your brain is like, man, everybody thinks I'm I'm a punk. Everybody yeah. you saw me do that. If you don't talk about that and if you don't like address that, 
because it happens. And, and, and if you don't like, like immunize people against that, I think it's a disservice because everybody talks about, you know, like, like awareness and avoidance. Yes. Awareness and avoidance. But what does that really mean? Yeah. What does that really mean? It means that you're going to have to fucking sometimes shovel some shit. Yeah. You know, you're going to have to be on the, on the end of it. And it's really, like I said, it is really empowering. If you can see from the outside, how, like when a guy who I only raised my hands to kill that kind of mentality, like nothing affects me other than what I want to affect me. That is, I, I cannot express how fucking powerful that is here. Yeah. But the problem is, is here will lie to you because it's not about the actual objective reality. It's about that monkey that you're talking about that, that social primate that we all have in our brain telling you, oh, no, if you if you don't respond, if you don't engage, if you don't fight, you'll be seen as less in, in the tribe. You'll be seen as weaker in the pack. It's a lie. Yeah. But if you don't if you don't like, talk about it and let people like like wrap their brain about it, they don't grok it, then then the you're not going to really accomplish anything because as soon as that emotion rises up, they're going to ride that emotion. Yeah. Th that's a good point. And um, I mentioned that article that I wrote about self-defense tips for men. And, and it's one of them. One of them is get over yourself. Um, and as we get older, hard to do, hard to, hard do, to, hard do. to do, hard to do because sometimes, you know, and, and I, I sometimes visit, there's this, there's this, um, uh, I forget what the website is. Um, and it, it's basically the question is, am I the asshole? So you 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 come up with a situation like, okay, this was happening. That's a Raylan Givens, by the way. Oh, I, I, I feel, yeah. it is Raylan Givensism. So backing up that, Raylan Givens says, if you bump into an asshole in the morning, you bumped into an asshole. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If you bump you know. into assholes all day, you're the asshole. Yeah. Well, and 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 that's the thing is and it's this, true, dude. You, you have to get over yourself. And yes. one of the things that I try to teach my children and, and they're in their 20s now, my daughter is graduating this year. It's like, like what the, when did what this the hell happen, happened? Dude? Exactly. When did your kids get it? I know, I know. <laughs> my boy my is son too, my boy's about to get his blue belt in BJJ now. I mean, it's it's crazy. It's crazy. He's going when to keep I got, my, I got my blue belt in like 2000. <laughs> 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 22 years ago, I got my blue belt. I couldn't even defend it now. It's so the game is over. There. So I got my blue belt in 2000, dude. Like, what the fuck, man? What, one of the things that I that I try to teach them is that, look, you know, growing up is a lifelong process. It never ends. And 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 if you think, you know, okay, I'm 21 now. I'm, I'm a legal adult or whatever the age is in your country. And I'm done. It That is the biggest way that you can fuck up your life are you trying to tell me that i'm a grown-up no, no we are no, exempt no. from that thank you thank you because <laughs> objectively you are wrong and you are completely wrong objectively no I'll, i mean no and that's right that's, that's, that. that's correct that's correct that, that is correct i mean and, I, and but, sorry to break to interrupt you but the, the no, point no. i want to make is that it's about what we've been talking about if if you want to you know swim with the sharks a big part is getting over yourself and learning to control yourself. And we all fail. We, we, nobody can, can get this right every single time. But that's going to be a big, big part of it. The psychological and the emotional aspect, controlling your emotions, handling the adrenal dump, handling the fear, and so on. Again, sometimes you freeze, you fuck up. Sometimes you're like, you know, Superman. And anything in between, it's all fine. But, but being aware of the fact that you're going to have to work at this it's, it's going to be work and it's never going to be done. You can be 99 years old and you've been doing this for, you know, your entire adult life and you're still going to have to work at it. Wim, I have, I have 31. No. Well, I, I mean, if I had my, old, my, my previous like college experience to it, so like 88 until now. So like, how many years is that? Whatever. I have all of those years of, of being a, a professional in violence. 
and I still get shit wrong and I yeah. still learn things. Sometimes the things I learn are not like things that I actually learn that are brand new. They just are like articulated or are packaged in a way that makes more sense to me that I can now articulate it better. That's just that's just fucking life, man. You know, yeah. I I would I am a court recognized expert in, in in certain forms of violence. I literally can go to court and testify about certain things, and even then, I can be wrong. I can get shit wrong. I can do things wrong. Some of it was because of of like maybe less than ideal understanding. But I would think that the majority of it would be because this thing is not telling me the truth about what's going on because I'm too emotionally invested. Yeah. Emotion, emotion is a very powerful drug that we all partake in. And it's valuable in a certain way, and it's not valuable in other ways. And the problem is when you're looking down the barrel of interpersonal violence and you're looking at something you've got the guy in front of you and he's there and he's you know i've looked at the fucking six foot five literally <laughs> me and my, my, my door guy daniel who's an ex-marine Daniel's actually shorter than me so i'm five foot ten he's probably like five foot seven but built like a bulldog i mean he's just uh -huh. awesome but we're looking at this guy. Like, how are we going to fight this guy? We're literally, <laughs> and he's sick. He's bigger than Clint. He's yeah. six foot five, probably 300 pounds of just jacked, steroided up, <laughs> fucking hardcore muscle. And I'm thinking, like, how are we going to fight this guy? Reload. You need a reload. <laughs> yes, a combat reload. Like, he's a bullet magnet at that point. But I mean, you can't. You can't just shoot people because they're big, right? So. When you're looking at that and you're thinking like, what the fuck? And then you start the fear, you know, and then you start getting into the, the yeah. worry. Or maybe you're worried about, maybe the worry may be, some people may be worried about the criminal charges. Yeah. You know, I've seen that in my law enforcement career. I had some stuff happen. I'm worried about, am I in the right legally? I know I'm in the right morally, but I'm in the right legally. Whatever your fear, your worry is. I try to, I want to tell people principles to try to minimize that from uh, an objective standpoint, but then you got to get it right here. I can't help you here. I can only yeah. help you like, it's okay. You're fine within a certain paradigm, but how you feel about it, I can't, I can't impact your fear, your feels, you know, whatever. Those are yours to own or not own. Yeah. It's a game you will have to struggle with. It's a thing you'll play your whole life, like you said. It's your whole fucking life. And I've been doing this at a high level for a long, long time. More than a lot of maybe some of your viewers have been alive, and I still struggle with it. And anybody who tells you that they don't, I'm suspicious of. I'm very suspicious of that person. I, I want to know why. Why don't you? And and we'll drill down on that. And maybe 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 they don't. Maybe they have the reason. Maybe they're just wired that way. Aaron is like that. Aaron yeah. doesn't struggle with a lot of stuff. And he and I have a lot of conversations about this. That's just the way he's neurologically wired. Yeah. And he has no, but, he but that's no the exception. I mean, that's and the he exception. He has no credit for that. That's yeah. just the way his brain is wired. And 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 yeah. and, and he was able to luck into a career field that rewarded him for that yeah. right and also that he went into the morally correct way of doing that he didn't yeah. become a gang member or a fucking hitman or whatever that's It'd just the good. way his brain is He'd be good clint, at it. <laughs> uh, clint our buddy clint clint was will tell you straight to your face i was not a good guy yeah when i first met clint the very first time i met clint clint by the way, is six foot five, six foot four, something like that. <laughs> Probably 300 pounds of aggression and hate. And Wait, hold, hold on. Um, I just saw Clint post a video of him working out and, and he's squatting a small car. 
<laughs> yes, Clint is a small house. He is a house of a fucking human being, right? And so when I met Clint, I never met him before. I talked to him a couple of times. Or we're sitting there, we're drinking, and we are nicely drunk at this point. So Clint goes, "Hey man, you were in, you were in, you were in Laredo? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I was in Laredo." He's like, "What are you doing? Border Patrol? You know, it's a federal agent?" Yeah. He's like, "I was in Laredo." I'm like, "Man, yeah, you were." And Laredo, Laredo is 97% Hispanic. So white boys in Laredo are very few and far between. And so I'm like, if you're a white boy in Laredo, why are you there? You know? And again, Clint is not subtle. He is shaved head, big goatee. Again, 300 pounds. Uh, he does strongman competitions. He does like the... the he, he is he's the built worst like a brick house. Scenario. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He also Don't... knows how to turn anything into a weapon. His his improvised weapons class should be like mandatory for for most people. But what I'm talking, why were you there? Uh, when were you there? And he was like a few years before I got there. I'm like, oh, well, well what were you doing there? Firebombing mostly. <laughs> fire firebombing? Like what do you mean firebombing? He's like, yeah. Firebombing. I'm like, what do you mean firebombing? He's like, well, you know, guys that own money, I would just like blow their houses up. I'm like, fuck. Like, what? Like, and when you when you bump into guys like this, and then you recognize the the sharks that live out there. Yeah. Like when you own the wrong people money, that's the guy. That right there is the guy that sent. Yeah. Collect. What are you gonna do? What 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 is your answer to, to that guy? You know, and and then I'm training with this guy. We're going on hand 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 to hand, and I'm giving up like hundred pounds of weight, which is, is significant. But then you're just like, how am I going to handle somebody that size? That guy from my 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 old career, Shane, same size, six maybe a little bit. Shorter, six foot four, again, 300 pounds, but also ex Navy. He was a boxer in the Navy. He was in Bureau of Prisons. He was the guy behind the shield. So yeah. when they would send the shield in for the really bad guys, he was the fucking meat shield. He would take the hits. And then also a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, I think he's a purple belt now. And also did Bikini uh, Tersa uh, Kali, which I do. Like he's not only like a physical fucking specimen of a human being, and you know counterterrorism for agent. He has the training of all of this stuff. What, what, what is your answer? You have to come up with an answer because it's your job to come up with an answer. Yeah. Whether it's your job as a human being, you're in a confrontation with this person in a bar, or you're the bouncer. Or you're the whatever you have to you have to have, and I would try to tell this to people when I would train them as as federal agents or as, as bouncers. Like sooner or later, you're going to have the question asked to you, and the question is some variation of "fuck you." What are you going to do about it? Yeah, you better have an answer because that answer is going to dictate a lot of how you go forward. Fuck you. What are you going to do about it? And especially if your job is in the realm of telling people no. No, you can't do that. No, your girlfriend can't jump up on the top of the table and dance. No, you can't grab the girl by her ass. No, you can't. Whatever it is, whatever the no is, you're telling them no. you got to stop. And they look at you. And they tell you, fuck you. What are you going to do about it? That's the job, man. Better have an answer. Yep. Better have an answer. If they shove you, if if, 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 if you're, you, again, you're, you're bumping. You're, I'm going to back up here. So you said something about bumping in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I am a federal agent at this time. I'm, I'm uh, uh, an air marshal. We are in... Uh, London. So my team is in a bar, a pub in London. And 
I've got a great team. This is this is going to be a, this is a bunch of guys that I like to hang out with. A lot of times you work with people that you don't like. Yeah. But you're a professional. They're they're good at their job. Whatever. Sometimes they're not. But these guys, I like all of them. So we all go out to this pub. We're having a great night. One of the guys on our team sees another guy who from another team from I think we were from Dallas. They were based out of L.A. And he hasn't seen this guy in like six years. At the time, they were both in Arizona. That guy was a Border Patrol. My buddy was a a state trooper. And they knew each other. They became friends. And they used to have parties. He hasn't seen this guy in like years. He's like, holy shit. I haven't seen this guy in fucking years. So we're all, all, both of our teams are, are, are partying. We're having a fucking great time. Well, I've noticed earlier this is one dude, white guy, walking around the bar. And every time he walks around the bar, I don't know if this, this actually comes across in the video, but every time he walks, he tries to walk past people and, and shoulder pump them. As he walks by, he accidentally he, he bumps into your shoulder. Them, right? So he's yeah. doing this. As a volume approach, he keeps doing this and doing this. And I'm watching him do it. Well, my buddy, the guy who's on my team, I see him do it to this guy. And I'm immediately getting ready to like step up. But my guy is so focused on trying to get to his old buddy because he's walking from the bar back to the table where we are. He's so focused on trying to, the, he doesn't really like recognize what this guy's doing. Yeah. So he takes the hit and just kind of like moves on because it doesn't register. Yeah. And he's yeah. focused on that and he goes back. And believe me, had it registered, it would have been a problem. <laughs> it would have been a problem because I know this guy. He, he, he He's a fighter. We all were fighters. It's what we did. We, were, we If you're not a fighter in that job, you're in the wrong job. So, but he let it go just because he was so focused on no, something mission. else. Yeah. The mission was hang out with my buddy that I haven't seen in six years, five years, whatever. So we're going and we're going and we're going. About hour and a half later, same thing happens to a different guy on the other dude's team, so the LA team. Uh, I don't know. He's Asian. I don't know if he was Korean or Japanese. I can't remember. Asian guy. Same shit happens. The same guy looking for the same fucking fight. Hits the shoulder and he finds the fight that he's looking for. And he hits the Asian dude. And the Asian guy turns around to him like, like, what the fuck? Like, dude, like what? Because he sees that it wasn't just like an initial. I mean, it wasn't an accidental. You bump the guy threw. He, he yeah, 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 yeah. There was yeah. A, and so the alien guy turns like, "What the fuck?" And the guy's like, "Fuck you, motherfucker." <laughs> thing. And one of the one of the the the, the brilliant and non brilliant things. Brilliant again from a moral like like perspective of like that's how you do it but a lot harder to rationalize self in a self-defense legal concept yeah in there as he's sitting there talking to him, he's got a drink in his hand and it's he was drinking whiskey like i was and he has a full what, what's your what's your bottle show, show me your, your glass oh. the glass one of those yeah, see how glass. thick that glass. I'm bring the glass back up. See how thick that bottom of that glass is. Now imagine taking that to a face because that's what that guy did. <laughs> as he was, as he was, and the guy's like, "Fuck you, motherfucker!" Immediately, like threw it, hit him right in the face. I mean, right in the nose, in the in the in the bridge of the nose, and right 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 to the forehead. And again, he didn't let the guy, like, he didn't stand back to observe his handiwork and see how magnificent the thrower was. As soon as he hit the guy, he was already five punches 
into the guy later. The fight was over before the other guy even knew it was a fight. Yeah. Which is perfect from a fight perspective, not perfect from a self-defense perspective. How do you justify that in court? Well, luckily the bar staff showed up and kicked us all out. Um, what is that? What, what's that joke? I decided to leave right after I got thrown out. And, yeah. um, you know, as, as we were getting kicked out, I told the manager, I'm like, Hey, you need to watch that dude because I've been watching him for like over two hours now trying to find that fight. He keeps running around shoulder thumping people looking for a fight. He's going to continue on. And to his credit, that that manager said, no, we're kicking him out, too. We're letting you guys go first. Yeah. Y'all are getting a head start. And I'm like, thank you. Good manager. That's a very good manager. It's very rare. You, you find <laughs> managers that, 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 that are that. You know, I was that kind of manager when I worked bars. Even when I wasn't going to do what I was managing. I, 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 know, I know the drill. And um, it, it, it was lucky that it went down the way it did. We... We, we won. Did we win? We won in a certain sense because the guy never got a, a punch thrown off. But we were just really lucky that the cops didn't get called, that we didn't get our jobs in trouble, yeah. you know, whatever. Again, I, I – it, it's very hard to explain to people that sometimes you can do things that are tactically unsound that feel better – emotionally they make you you're able to live with it better yeah. and it's it's the ego again it's it's it is you know, it's completely yeah. ego and it's it's wrong when it's yeah. wrong but but guys don't talk about it and that's that 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 is bad because they talk about these things as if objective reality is the same thing as emotional consistency and it's not Mm. Because your emotions, how you live with things, um, I'll give you one. I'll give you a question. This is back to a, a social violence. So a social violence, we didn't really talk about that earlier. A social violence is, is predation. So it's like um, if I'm robbing you, if I'm giving your money or, or rape is usually uh, uh, a social the woman is the resource that they're, they're trying to take. So a social violence is resource driven. So if I, if I, if I ask you, is it better for a woman to fight back from rape or not? Statistically, yes. And, and that's, that's the thing, you know, I mean, the tactics of the thing are, are kind of obviously situation by situation. But if you look at things emotionally, yeah. women that don't fight back from rape have a much tougher time getting back to equilibrium than women that do fight back, even if that fighting back is the worst thing to do tactically. Yeah. Yeah. That's the emotion and that's the bullshit of, of the human emotional experience. Emotion is not logic. Emotion, the emotion has a, a evolutionary value, but it's not always positive. No, you know? and we, we live in an age where emotion is basically taken front and center uh, on, on basically everything I, that is going on in society is, uh, you know, yes. whatever causes you outrage is is very important. Whatever causes you discomfort. The whole, the whole thing of clickbait yeah. The, the 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 underlying premise of clickbait is emotional. Yeah. Your emotion drives that click, which drives money. Yeah. yeah. That 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 is a massive economic driver now. And, and when it comes to self defense and, and safety and, and 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 violence, is that you know not being led by your emotions and working on that is what I talked about before, and, and as a skill to trying to develop emotional control not being triggered into doing things not being triggered by your own outrage or having these you know let's call it systems in place that you trade to avoid yourself getting carried away by your emotions and getting drawn into situations which afterwards 
you you say like, what the fuck was I thinking? I was like, no, exactly. you weren't you weren't thinking, you were feeling. You weren't, you weren't. That's that, yeah. that's the whole point. And uh, that's the thing is, is if you get the guy, and I've done it, dude. I've I I've, I've done it to people. I've I've been in a confrontation with somebody where I am presenting one face to everybody. I'm I'm being very I'm, and this is not like a proud thing. There may be a little bit because there was a couple times it was warranted, but where I'm talking to some guy who's a fucking piece of shit, and I'm saying everything verbally neutral and appropriate, but when nobody's looking, I'm like winking at the guy, I'm blowing him kisses, letting him know that I think he's a fucking piece of shit. Yeah. You know, and again, that's not right in a moral sense. I'm telling you at the time I was so teed off and so pissed off, but I was able to tactically think that if I get involved in the emotional game, I'm going to look objectively worse than this guy who's ranting and raving and whatever. It's like, if you see online, you see an argument between one guy who's just looks like a fucking rabid lunatic and another person is sitting there very calmly and rationally explaining their points. You know which one's winning that argument, right? And also, and also for you know witnesses and cameras, what it, what it yes, is. Yes, but, but, but that's the whole point. That's my whole yeah. point. You are the witness when you're watching the YouTube video or you're watching the video. You are the witness, and you see this one guy acting like an absolute fucking rabid asshole, and this other guy very calmly explaining the points. As the as the non-invested third-party witness, you know which one is winning. The problem is, the real problem is, is if you ask the guy who's acting like a rabid asshole, he will tell you he's winning because in okay. his brain he is winning because his passion and it's that's 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 the problem. Emotion lies, feelings lie. You know, I tell people I'm a big gun guy, right? So if I showed you my my my, my gun collection here, some of your European like, fans <laughs> be like, can you put this guy like on a watch list? But um little little, little iffy. But when I when I when I tell people like like they, they want to talk about guns, I said we're talking about guns. I, I've been doing guns for at a high, very high level, at an elite level. For you know, when I pistol, I was an elite pistol shooter for decades, like top one percent of the world. Yeah, and understanding and so, that that one percent, understanding that that one percent is a, a big variance. The worst guy in the NBA. Yeah, the worst guy who will never see one minute of playing time is still in the one percent, and so is Michael Jordan. Yeah, and, what's and, the uh, difference between those? For, for, anyway. the audience, hold on, hold on. for the audience, I mean, I've seen Monty shoot. Um, he's not he's no bragging. Okay? I've, not, I've, Monty, I believe me, there's guys that smoke me. I mean, I've of smoked course. me. But, but I mean, like you said, you know, the 1%. Yeah, the, I'm still in the top 1%. But maybe not so much now because now I've, I've had to become a left-hand shooter because yeah, of my, yeah, yeah. my injury. Yeah. But I'm not anymore. But at, at my time, I was. And, dude... I'll talk to these guys and I'm just like, like, like what, like, what, what, what are you talking about? What do you, I don't know. I don't know women. It's just when you start dealing in these levels, there are infinite degrees of complexity. Yeah. And it's, and it's not always as simple as just, can you put like in, in the gun shooting world, can you put rounds on paper, you know? Yeah. Okay, well, great. Dude, you can fucking shoot the dick off a fly, but what if you're moving? Yeah. What if a guy is trying to stab you when you're trying to have there's a num there's infinite degrees of complexity you can you can start wrapping that around. And the problem is I again backing up to like I've been in actual gunfights. I have actually shot at people in anger, and people have shot back at me in anger, and that was not even a minutes. Yeah. Minutes. I, I could tell somebody I'm an expert. Oh yeah. How much time you got? 
30 two seconds. Minutes. <laughs> like, what? Like, what? Like, what? Like, what? What kind of expertise is two minutes? Like, what the fuck is that even? Like, what are you talking about? Like, it's so certain degree, certain amounts of it are. Well, it's it's shit, but I, I talk about are, I talk about this a lot with people, and I say, look, you know, nobody has nobody. My Facebook group is called "You Are Not Aries." Aries, God of War. Uh, uh, and and nobody Aries, has. But when has, I want, I want to be Aries. No, that is something oh, else. <laughs> I want to be the God of War. Now. Can you sell me a course, Wham, where I can become <laughs> Aries God of War? Because if you cannot, I need to move on to my next guy. I'm just telling you the truth, dude. It, I it, need to be Aries. I will send you the set of three DVDs for five ninety nine. <laughs> three st- three easy steps. <laughs> non Aries people hate this guy. What is it? They hate. They hate. <laughs> dude, we 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 gotta get to the bonus segment for for my patrons because it's it's 11 p.m. here. And do what you want to do, man. I, I'm I'm good till I got another five hours. To yeah, no. So so folks, um, Monty and I are going to keep talking. I've got a bunch of questions for my patrons. So I do I do I do need to do something though for your non patrons before. Okay. One, one sure. thing I do want to do. That. All right, guys. So I told you when I would tell like bouncers or. I usually use this in the bouncer uh, uh, teaching other guys because that's what I taught. I didn't teach non-bouncers. But I would, the first thing I would always teach is that the guy who stops talking first wins. That is correct. Yeah. The second thing that I would teach people, and this is a, a like you and I talked when it's a gross generalization because there are a number of things that you can do it. But the, the, the general physical uh, visual cue that I would teach people is what, what I call the hip shift. So I'm going to try to do this on video for you non-video people. I'll try to describe when most people talk to you, they talk squared. Yeah, they talk to you with their feet, feet parallel and their shoulders, like facing you squared up. Nobody talks to you in a bladed stance. So, so for the folks stance, listening, I mean, like, the bladed right. stance is when somebody has sh- one foot back, one forward, one shoulder so, back, one forward. So usually you're right. Most people are right-handed. So usually your right foot is standing back. Your traditional martial arts stance probably looks something like this, right? So there would be some degree of, of your right foot is behind y- your hips. And then your left foot is forward. The only people who talk to you like this in society are cops and social workers. That's it. Nobody, everybody talks to you square to you. They, they face you. That's how they, that's how we kind of talk in the West. If they talk to you like this, there's a problem, right? And again, this is another, another generalization. Um, when, 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 when you, Talk to people, you tend to look them in the West, you tend to look them in the face. You tend to, you maybe you have your hands up, your hands may be moving and a number of different things, but you kind of like square off people. And, and whatever, even if it's an argument, most people, and again, this is not, I try, I never make anything universal because women I both have trained, I can fight you from here have trained to fight you from from this position. A neutral stance. Of, of, yeah. of, of not of a neutral stance. So just, and I don't need to, to, to work up to it. I don't need to, to get into a stance. I don't need to put on pajamas or some kind of special outfit to fight you. I can fight you fucking from here. And I will fight you from here because I've done it. I've seen me do it. Not a lot of people have. So you can't count on this not to happen. I'm just trying to tell you the things that happen most commonly. Yeah. You know, the 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 the, the statement is if you handle things that that happen most often, you'll you you'll be able to handle what is it? Yeah, you, 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 you know, I don't know what you mean. That, that, yeah. If you can can train to deal with the most common things when the most common things happen, you'll be able to deal with them because you've trained for it. Yeah. So if you have somebody who's squared off, 
most people don't know how to fight from this stance. Yeah. And understanding that most of your bar people, they're not necessarily trained martial artists. They're just really big, strong, fast people who have learned a couple of things and they know how to fight. They know how to punch and they know how to take a punch. But they're not like necessarily always going to be like massively trained. Maybe yeah. they are. Probably not. What they're almost always going to be is bigger and stronger and faster than you. Almost always. Not always. You ever once when you see a littler guy pick on a bigger guy, but it's not the rule. The rule is the bigger, stronger, faster guy who knows how to like hit and take a hit. And don't misunderstand. They have not taken a lot of hits. Yeah. Normally the fight is over before the other guy even knows there's the fight. Yeah. So what you need to learn, I'm going to change this for here for the video people, for the non-video people. I don't know if you can see how much you can see this. The biggest visual cue that I use is your hips, right? Yeah. And most people talk to you squared up. They're squared. They're looking you in the face. They are squared. You're probably squared. You're looking at each other. When I say squared, I mean shoulders are, are, are facing front. Your hips are facing front. Your martial arts stance, your karate stance, your, 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 your Muay Thai stance, whatever, is more bladed, right? Most people fight like this. They, they, they talk like this. They fight like this. So what you have to worry is how do they go from this to this? This is what you got to worry about. You have to worry about the hip shift. There's a couple of things we'll talk about that. But if you see those hips shift, that is the biggest cue you have that you are in the shit. Yeah. And when, 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 when somebody goes from this, they're talking, you're a motherfucker, what, whatever they're doing, whatever they're saying, it doesn't matter. They're doing this, as soon as those hips shift, that's when you have to worry. Yeah. That's when you have to, you have to make a decision. And... The problem that you have is most street fighters know this is a problem instinctively. They know that that hip shift is a, is a, in, in poker parlance, is a tell. Yeah. So they're going to hide that hip shift. The two biggest that I've ever seen, the number one is they're going to talk to their buddies behind them. They're going to be like, they're talking to you. You're saying this, and I look, and I, I, I want to make sure that I don't lose the volume, so I'm going to like talk sideways. Normally, their head, their head will be all the way behind them, like that. But they'll say something like, "Can you believe this guy?" But they'll say it by turning around. They're turning their back to you, so they're squared away, and they'll turn to their buddy. Can you believe this guy? And then that's where the punch comes. Yeah, and you yeah. see it here. This is when you pick it up visually. It happens, the punch, the punch is happening way back here, but you don't see it because the blade, the, the, the body is hiding it. Is this volume still coming? Yeah, out? no, I, yeah, it's good. Uh, I, I just want to make sure. So here, but you don't see it until and it's too it's late. Too late. Yeah, By the time, time you see it, it's done. You get knocked and down. so basically it's like, hey, can you can you believe this guy? And then there, there's the punch. And it's already here, right? It's already there in, into your head. And if that punch lands, it's not necessarily a deal breaker. It might be, it may be an end of end of the punch immediately. You won't know. You won't know until later on if it's the end of the end of the fight. They'll tell you, somebody will wake you up and tell you that that was the end of the fight. But even if you survive it. And you're in a really bad position yeah. because that punch has got all of this momentum. And it's not like a normal martial arts punch. It's not a it's not a cross. It's not a hook. It's this weird bastardization of this kind of like hooking punch that comes in. And it's like three or four countries long. And it yeah. just comes in. And if it connects, man, you have eaten all of that shit like right into your face or jaw 
that's a really, really hard thing to, to come back from. So that's like the first setup is the buddy. Like they got their buddies behind them and like, can you believe this piece of shit? You know, whatever. The second one is the I'm leaving. I'm done. I, you know what? Fuck this guy. I can, it's just like, you know what? So I'm going to see you. You know what? Fuck you. And there it is. It, it's right there. I mean, as soon no. as I you turn, you've already, as soon as I turn, as soon as, as soon as I do this, back to my, my, my waist here, because this is where like, most of your martial arts, this is where a lot of your power comes from. Most of your power actually is this, is this, this shift. As soon as I turn here, I'm loaded. And now I've, I've torqued it here and this is coming back. And, and it, as soon as you do that, you're, you're done. You, you've got a really bad problem. But the main thing to, 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 to watch for, like I would tell my new guys, is like, number one, watch for the guy who stops talking. Yeah. The guy who stops talking, who's giving you a one-word answer to whatever, when he stops talking, problem. Number two, watch those hips. As soon as those hips shift, I t- you need to be all the way in or all the way out. Yeah. And by and, and, all and, the way out, I, go ahead. Yeah, you, you, you need to get out of range, and that can be a stepping back to the side, left, right, whatever, out of reach of, its, of that sucker punch coming in. Or like you said, close the distance. So you basically smother. I mean, I want, I want to be on a shoulder. I want to be like right in. So wherever that punch lands, I'm off the X. Yeah, the X is there. where he had me. Wherever he had me in his visual acuity, wherever he had me positioned when he turned, I, I need not- to not be there when he when he reorients. Yeah. I need to be here. I need even if he hits me, it's gonna be with his bicep rather than his rather than his form, whatever. And those are kind of the two like biggest things that I would teach people tactically, like as far as as far as like what moves to do. Yeah. But if, if else, that's what if that's what they they learn really quickly, I mean they'll be able to handle a lot of the bullshit that happens. Everything else is here because yeah. I can teach you those things. I can tell you that all day long, but if you don't get this part of your brain wired right where you see it happening. And again, I, I'm not going to tell you, I, I laughed. I have told so many martial arts instructors, like, why are we training this stupid shit? Why are we training this? Uh, you know how many jabs I've seen in my life? You know how many jabs I've seen in my life? I just tell martial arts uh, my instructor all the time. So guess what happens to me one night at work? So I'm sitting there talking to a guy, and he's ranting around, and I know this is going to go. I, it's going to go to a fight. It's going to go to a fight. So I'm watching him. I'm watching. Him, I got my hands up. You know, and I, I I like to do mine. So my my position is if this makes sense. So I do like kind of like this thing. So I have a beard. So I stretch my beard a lot when I have my hands up here. So this is like my like where I come from. I do a lot of stuff from here. And so I'm sitting here like this, and this dude is talking an impressive amount of shit. Like he is like I I I whatever it's going on and on. And all of a sudden, when I'm watching his right, I'm watching that right. I'm watching for the hip shift. The other thing that I watch for, uh, for you people, is I talk with my hands a lot, right? but where are my elbows? Elbows are down. Even if I'm talking with my hand, I'm doing this stuff. But that elbow comes up, that's a problem for me. That's a hook. That's a that's a cross. It's whatever. Even even if uh, even if so, I do. Uh, uh, more open hand stuff now because of my injury and just because yeah. I hit you with my fist and I break my hand hitting you. It's really hard to grapple or get to a, a, a tool. Even back when I was in, 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 in law enforcement, I was starting to go away from punching from my Muay Thai and boxing backgrounds because if your martial art has a, a fracture named after it, it's probably suboptimal. Just say <laughs> I don't get to wrap a lot before I hit, and I, I don't have like big beefy, you know, like front wrist. I, I'm a little guy, so 
I, I do more open hand stuff. But even then, I'm looking for that elbow to come up. Right? I want yeah. that elbow to come up. And that's my, it's another cue that I have. And this guy didn't, he didn't have them. He's talking a bunch of shit. And all of a sudden, that, that jab just came out. And when it came out, I waved back and I tried to like parry it. I missed, but I came in behind it and I'm ready to go. I'm ready to rock and roll. Like, okay, you've, you've, the other thing that I would tell, teach people is from a mental aspect is to give yourself permission to come off the leash. Yeah. Put yourself on the leash until you come off the leash. And once you, once it's time to come off the leash, that's when just like all of your stuff, all of that anger. In, in, in the immortal words of Patrick Swayze, I want you to be nice until it's time, time to not be nice. nice. <laughs> Once it's time not to be nice, all, all, and I don't mean all of it. I mean, your taxes, your, that rude motherfucker at the, 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 the department of motor vehicles, Whoever the last piece of shit fucking person you dealt with at the Starbucks, I don't care. Whatever it was, take all of that shit that you've had to eat in your <laughs> life from your, your spouse, your kid. I don't care. Take all of it and compress it and give it back to them all at once. Once it's time to come off the leash, get off the fucking leash. Get off the fucking leash, man. Just Go. Go until the job is done. And once the job is done, you still have to have enough control to, you're not an animal, you rein yourself back in. But once that leash comes off, let it come off yeah. and, and go. And go until the job is done. That's when you are legally, morally, ethically, whatever, all of that serendipity came together in a beautiful moment in your life. It's not going to happen very often. It's going to happen very often. But when it does happen, take advantage of it. You know, that's a, that's a good place to 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 wrap this part up uh, we, because we got to get to the Patreon section. Do it, do it, do it. Do it. Sorry, yeah. I'm sorry. No, no, it's okay. It's okay. I can uh, do this. I can literally. I can talk about this working out. I can talk about this shit all day long yeah. because there are. Think- Endless amounts of nuance you can get into. For the listeners, I mean, Monty and I can go on for five hours more. So and we uh, would. Uh, we would uh, actually. And we will. Maybe <laughs> <get> some more. <laughs> but but uh, no, I'm, I'm going to wrap this part up. We are going to continue talking because I have a bunch of questions from my patrons sure. that I got to ask you. Do it. So I'm going to say goodbye. I'm a, little bit, I'm, I'm a little bit nervous, though. I'm a little bit nervous about these <laughs> questions. Holy crap. It's going to be okay. All right. <laughs> um, but uh, I'm going to say hi to will, the regular will, listeners. Will you respect me in the morning? That's all I want to know. I always do, Monty. I always do. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's go. Do it. Okay. But first, I'm going to wrap up uh, for, the, for the main episode. Everybody, thanks for listening. Uh, hey, thank to- you guys for listening to our bullshit and our drinking <laughs> and we love you i don't know you but look the only thing i really care about is that good people get home at the end of the night yeah. and, and and i want you to get home uh, uh okay legally but i also want you to get home like okay with yourself because i'm not going to lie to you i have laid there at night Wishing I had done other shit, you know, pro and con. I have, I, I, when I say pro and con, I mean, there have been times I have laid there saying I fucked up legally. I fed that emotional monkey and that was the bad call. And there's times I've laid there where I did everything right from a a legal, um, whatever perspective. And then I felt like less of a man. And I, I, I just, I can't tell you what that right like balance is, but I can only give you my experiences and, and my insights, however bullshit that is. And hopefully you can gain something valuable from it. And I hope you can. If you can't, I'm sorry that 
the failing is mine. Just understand that it, this is complicated stuff. It's not easy because if it was easy, everybody would, would fucking do it. <laughs> and, you, and know? you know, it's, I mean, uh, you, you've got, we, we joke a lot and, and you're, you know, easygoing guy and, and, and we talk and we laugh and so on, but you no, know, you've been through a bunch of shit. I, I know some of it and, and a lot of people uh, will think, you know, the, the, these two guys here are just drinking and, and, and talking we are. bullshit. We are, just we are drinking, but, and we are talking some bullshit, but, but you know, there, there's a lot of uh, information right here that a lot of people actually have to bleed before they get that. So if, if it works for you, that it, would be great. That's my fear, I guess, before we, we, sw we switch to your other thing is that I don't, I, I don't know, Wim, it's, it's, it's like, again, you know, how many seconds of, of, of experience do you really have? Like how much experience is what you've done really worth? And I don't, I don't know what I guess worth is always determined by the people who were, who were buying the product. You know, they they did they determine the value. I don't know what kind of value I can give or not give. I know that there are things that I know now that I wish I had known 30 years ago. I really do wish I would have known things like, I just a simple shit like the hip shift. Yeah. I've known that for years before I knew it, if that makes sense. Yeah, I yeah. knew it at a certain level in my brain, but I didn't, because I, I knew about the sucker punch, because it's always the sucker punch. Yeah. Your normal street fighter wants to sucker punch you. They don't want to fight you. They want to hurt you. They don't want to get into a fight. It's not a fucking boxing exhibition. They just want to crack you. And be done and move on to whatever whatever it is they want to do in their life. But if I would have known that, it would have articulated. Got to wrap up. Are we doing this live? Yeah. Really? <laughs> no, we're recording. <laughs> we got to wrap up. Dude. What? We, so, we're recording. <laughs> uh, I just saw something pop up. My, but if I would have known that, that would have crystallized so much knowledge to me of what to look for i mean i knew i was looking for the sucker punch but it's one thing to tell somebody watch out for the sucker punch and then another thing to say like how does a sucker punch develop in real time mm. yeah and to me the main the main component of the real uh, of the sucker punch developing is really two two things number one the main thing is the hip shift it's really hard to sucker punch somebody with your hips square can it be done? Yes. Incredibly difficult to do with the squared. Take, take specialized training. You, you, you could do it. You could do it. I probably couldn't. I don't have that degree of, of, of training. But it can be done for certain people. But if you're dealing with those people already, you're in a you're in a really bad spot. You're, you're kind of already halfway fucked. The main things, though, are the hip shift and, the, and that elbow coming up. If that elbow comes up, that's that power in the shoulder or, or, or and the torque from the, from, the, from the, the waist. If I would have known just those two things 20 years ago, that would have saved me some pain. <laughs> well, you know, with, with, with that in mind, folks, Monty and I are going to talk some more about this stuff on the Patreon. Join us there. Up, it's, guys. it's going Thank to be you. awesome. Okay, take care.